The views expressed on this Turnbuckle Tabloid live stream or Turnbuckle Tabloid podcast episode do not reflect the views, thoughts, or opinions of the RageWorks brand, including the RageWorks podcast network, RageWorks content partners, advertisers, and affiliates. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Jay the Red Santee, host of Turnbuckle Tabloid. And as you know, here on our show, we are big fans of music. Pop, R&B, reggae, rock, whatever have you. We love to play it here on the show. But what we want to play is your music. And how can we do that? So you guys want to take and share in our Patreon. Ladies and gentlemen, go to our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Turnbuckle Tabloid. And just... Give us a small donation, and we would love to share your music on our show. Whether you're an artist, you're a singer, you're a rom, you're a producer, whatever it is that you guys do in the field, we want to share your music to the masses and our hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of listeners and viewers and followers. So make sure you go to our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Termical Tabloid and be a part of our show as much as we want to be a part of sharing your talent. So hope to hear from you guys soon and enjoy the show. Hey, this is Madison and my mom listens to Turbuckle Tabloid in the car. Jay, you curse too much. Turbuckle Tabloid. Three, two, one. Oh. 
This is Little Bit, and you're listening to Turnbuckle Tabloid. Fuck Jay Santee. Give me that fucking mic. Turnbuckle Tabloid, cutting a promo. Cutting a promo, ladies and gentlemen, with the sound of fucking New York behind us, as always. What's a show without it? Of course, as always. Cutting a promo, ladies and gentlemen, we will be discussing... Oh. Listen, and, and... Actually, sorry to cut you up, but I just realized something. What's that? We don't have an episode without an interview. We always interview the L train. <laughs> so, so in all honesty, we're all right. There's always there's always some kind of um f- or, or a frosty, Mr. Frosty. Uh, <laughs> you know, we're always talking to somebody. Someone's always around. Yeah, we're never alone. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you, New York City, for supplying Mr. Softy, us. Mr. Softy, you know. That's that was my nickname in high school, Mr. Softy. I wonder why. Mm, don't wonder for too long. <laughs> the art of the no sell. I was. I was. Um, is it really an art, or is it just like an emba- the embarrassment no, a, of the no sell? You know, <laughs> like, it's, it's an art now because honestly, I I don't get it. I don't understand <laughs> how the fuck people get away with not really selling themselves anymore. I think, I think it's the embarrassment of the no sell. In all honesty, is it what it really is? Yeah, I think so. It's fucking sad. Why is someone getting up after two Canadian destroyers? <laughs> You know what pisses me off the most? Like, like this week on Impact or like AEW or something like that, or like on last week, like Omega gets fucking drilled to, with two DDTs and comes right back up two minutes later, like not dizzy, nothing. I'm like, that same move put Edge in the hospital two weeks ago in a storyline on Raw. No, the the yeah. one the one that the one that the, what what led me to this was we were watching uh we were watching War Games and the women's match. It was right? a good night, yeah. Good night. We gotta do we were gonna do a review on it, right? We um. We're watching we're watching the, the women's match, right? And out comes a toolbox. And you were already over it. <laughs> I said, wait a minute. This is what we're doing now? Right. We're pulling out the tool and who was it? Was it Rhea Ripley who pulled it out? What, uh, it was Rhea Ripley and it was a, no 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 yeah, and it was a spongy hammer. Right. <laughs> but it made it made like that <laughs> sound. <laughs> what? what? Yeah. What? <laughs> what? So, I go. Okay, wait a minute. All right, let's let's let's. Usually, when you're when you're when you're getting to that point in a match where you're pulling out weapons, it's like I can't put this person down. Right. Or it's a hardcore kind of match, type of match, right? First of all, war games. By the way, this this must have been the cleanest war games I've ever seen in my life because no one bled. It's war games. So you no one bleeds. And you know what? It's funny. NXT doesn't make the wrestlers bleed at war games, but AEW bleeds during Super Clown pa- <laughs> um, Fun Fetty Party on fucking Wednesdays. It's, like it's what the f- what are we what? I feel like the timing's just off. I don't know what the fuck the deal is. I'm lost. I really am, guys. If you want to call in, the phone number is three one five three seven one four three six seven. Phone number is three one five three seven one four three six seven. Before we continue, Red, can you please explain to the audience why? We even made this kind of promo because I think it has to do with um, Pat McAfee's amazing neck brace. You could go, yeah, you could go in, go in depth into that. Well, well, you know, after War Games, Pat McAfee got Panama Sunrise, which by the way still sounds like an alcoholic beverage. It's always uh, going to be an alcoholic. Yeah. So it, it is. <laughs> it is. Um, after he after they, they lost, he had his podcast the next day, and he showed up in a fucking neck brace. Right. And to to me and Red, I don't know about you, but I looked at it like cool. I expect that. Right. But to everyone else, I treat it like God's fucking second coming because no one else sells anything anymore. Right. So um, let, let me let me, let me me go to the Facebook post that I posted on Facebook. Shout out to me uh, because, <laughs> because I made sure to post in the chat. And I got mad love. A lot of conversation on it. Uh, we got a lot of uh, a lot of eyes on the on the post because, on the prize because it was a great conversation and uh, I have to I have to quote it here. I don't want to get it, I don't don't want to get anything wrong. I want to put it verbatim. Yeah, I don't want to get anything wrong. So um, while I try to find it, what do you thought about the initial reaction of seeing um, Pat McAfee in a, in a in a neck brace on his show? Surprising or was it? Wow, I expect this shit from a wrestler. Why are we hyped for this anymore? Right. Like why? Like why should I be fucking hype? I should be expected. Okay, let me find it. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, back in the trenches. Of, yeah, let, let of me our fucking um, group. Yeah, let me um, let me just um. Uh, oh, I got, I got uh, it. Okay, a filibuster. Bro. Okay. Pat McAfee wears a neck brace to his sports radio show, which is completely unaffiliated with wrestling. A day after working a few spots in a match, he's true. Only a few spots. 
Meanwhile, your favorites will take a nuclear bomb to the leg in a tourney match and not sell it the next three matches that same day. The last person who did that was Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania when he fought Triple H first and then he fucking did the triple threat and he sold that leg the entire night. Right. That was the last time I saw something like that happen. Um... Uh, a few comments. I'll I'll do the comments. Someone said like a good a good old school heel, a hundred percent. Many of the newer fans don't even understand what selling is, and it's sad. That's that's a good point. Mm-hmm. And then Whole Milk Mike says the worst example of a wrestler coming back from a devastating injury is Sasha Banks. Great example. Thank you, Mike. She gets a chair wrapped around her neck, and stomped on her throat. She's back in less than a week, and nothing happened. But this is the thing that kills me, and you know. Although I'm I'm I'm, I'm going to jump in it quick cuz I, I was trying to save it for something else but I get a lot of shit for being labeled as is oh you're just old and you just want the old way of wrestling and that doesn't happen and you know it's a new day of wrestling and wrestling is different now blah 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 but as soon as a fucking old back like Sting comes into wrestling it's like yay an old guy is back thank you <laughs> the old day of wrestling was the sell to sell. Yep. Put the other person over. And not only that, to sell an injury. If you go through a table, I shouldn't see you for weeks. It's like now everybody's superhuman. Everybody's fucking, uh, fuck this shit. Ah! It's like, come on, no. <laughs> no, there's a reason why, in, you know, fine, I get it. The, uh, the, 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 the mindset for certain uh, wrestlers or certain uh, um, angles is to say that these beings are bigger than other individuals. That's okay. why they're wrestlers. Okay, but not everyone needs to be the build up Hulk Hogan guy. Right. Like, exactly. Come on. Come Even on. Hogan, when. What's that noise? You hear that, right? Yeah. What the fuck is that? It's something swinging. Like a, yeah. It's probably on the mic somewhere. That's sus. Like in, like in um, Among Us. <laughs> um. I think that it's it's um it go, it goes to to where the 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 thought process is like even Hogan fucking would sell the fucking injury and then he come back it's a big pop it's like oh shit he's back he's back after a fucking week no what's your thought about it um it's 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 a missing art it really is um People would complain when Shawn Michaels would oversell. I would rather have an oversell than no sell at all, period. Uh, if you're truly trying to portray that what we're watching is legit, you have to, you have to, you have to understand that you're that you're you're trying to tell your audience that every move matters. If I super kick you in the head, guess what? I shouldn't come back up. <laughs> but guess what? I do a kip up and nothing happened. Remember when fucking um, with uh uh uh, uh with Leo Rush when he did a fucking uh uh, uh Hurricanrana? Oh no no, what was it? Um, a Canadian destroyer from yep. the top of a ladder. Yep, and he got right back up. The fuck? <laughs> like, come on! Do you hear that? Canadian destroyer from off, a, the off a ladder, ladder and he got through a table right I back up. I think it was through a table as with well. With fire and AIDS and <laughs> thumbtacks, and he got up. <laughs> No, honestly, it did. What the fuck? So, in, in war games, Rhea Ripley pulls yeah. out the sledgehammer. Squishy or not, just regardless, a sledgehammer. You're supposed to get hit with a sledgehammer, right? And it's supposed to be... Oh, and Brett, please tell the audience, it wasn't a light hit. She welled the shit out of her with it. Um, get hit with a sledgehammer. Oh, uh, um, what, who is it? Dakota Kai bounced right back up. <laughs> the fuck is the point of hitting somebody with yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. I remember when chair shots were the end of the night. Now it's yo for uh, real, I'm, for real. I remember when a chair shot was deadly, and, and now I, it's not. Now it now it's as equivalent to as a rubber ball, <laughs> a rubber no, ball. And I'm happy. I'm happy that we don't have um, this day and age like it was years ago, where we had kids who were emulating wrestlers. And I was about to make that point. Go ahead. Yeah, that, that, and now that. You know, somebody's gotten not getting hit over their fucking head with a chair, and, and they fucking um, they're getting hurt. You know how we were told, please do not try this at home. Them no selling shit is basically saying, saying please try this at home. You'll be fine. <laughs> I won't. 
It's I won't. Oh my god. How ah, look out, boy Jason. What's up, boy? Yeah. What's good, boy? It's gotta be Marco. Turn broken tab boy, who's this? What's up, Jay? Yeah. What's up, Marco? Uh, what's going on, Marco? Ooh. Marco, we gotta go through this quickly. I just gotta ask you. What happened to selling and wrestling? What happened? I was just hearing what you were saying, man. I absolutely concur with you, both of you. Both of you. But what? <laughs> so now, think, oh, my God. Well, the, the guy who posted on the on her page, man, who got me out of went on what? And now this, uh, wow. People are like, wow. <laughs> Way over there, man. <laughs> what? But seriously, and, and the the game has now come to where you're gonna have to hit somebody with a bus to yeah, sell yeah. an injury. Marco, let me ask, Marco. We got we got because the the topic of cutting a promo this week is is the, is the art of you know what, fuck the embarrassment of of the no sell. Why uh, why am I seeing someone go through three ring of fires and a table and a fucking thumbtack bed and getting right back up after kicking out at one? Whoa, whoa, whoa. When do you think the, the when do you think this 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 became a thing? Do you do you blame Hulk Hogan's build up? Do you blame um, laziness? What's the fucking root to the problem of why we can't sell a fucking DDT anymore? You know what? Because keep the, uh, the guy from the back, and they're not, they're not doing their job, man. They're not doing their job because they're, they they don't know how. First of all, they don't they don't know how to give a storyline like they're supposed to. With, with coherency to the mind for big, people like us who love wrestling and we used to see like remember I, I will give you a big example remember when Mac, Randy Savage grabbed the belt and put it through the throat of the Ricky Stingo and yes. he went to the hospital yes and like were guys who knew they knew that they had coherency with, with, uh, with the storyline Nowadays, you just want to do like the Biz Russo thing, the Jerry Springer thing, the Jerry Springer thing. You know what? It's old. It's, you know, they're going like, you don't like Goldberg. Like you, you say, now, and then comes Sting, who's older than Goldberg. He's like 61 years old. Oh my God, the uh, hypocrisy of it is like, what? Are you serious right now? No, Are let me, kidding me, let me tell you something. I don't get, I don't give a fuck, like, how old. A wrestler is right. There comes a point in time where you're not as strong, you're not as as effective as you are. Like when I see Sting, I honestly gonna sit there and tell Sting, "Pa, I, I, you you can't do it like you you did it before. You can't. It's not the same anymore. You're you're, you're not. You, you, you can't whip my ass. I'm sorry. You can't beat me up. You're not. Sell me that you can beat me up. I want the sell." If you hit me with a bat that you swing and knock me on the head or on my back, I should not be on TV for fucking two or three weeks because I have to recover. Marco, Gordon Ramsay sold better on that fucking c cooking show <laughs> than most of the guys in the back. What the fuck? But, uh, Marco, before we let you go, um, what is the, the, the biggest thing you think is missing with the sell? What, what, what in wrestling is being lost with wrestlers not selling? I didn't get the last point, Golden. I think I think I have a bad eye, man. What? What? What's the what? What is being lost with wrestlers not selling, selling a move, selling a gimmick? What's being lost these days? Uh, I think the gimmick, man. Especially yeah. the gimmick and the thing is that you have to be true to their uh, character, to their uh, well, their the image they're, they're managing. So, I think there it's part of, of the roster, all and part of the guy who's doing the storyline. If they're going to do it, the thing is that already the business is so exposed that people don't believe it anymore. Right. And that's why Mexican Lucha here is very concerned about things that happen behind the scenes. And now they're doing the behind the ring and all that thing with Jim Cornette and Jericho is doing the, the talk to over thing. People are knowing now the secrets and oh, that's his fault, right? Because he said it's entertainment. Well, it's like a magician, man. If you expose the tricks, it's not magic anymore. Yeah, you're right. That's a, that's, a, that's a good point. But, Marco, thank you for, for calling in as always, and thank you for supporting. Uh, and as always, give us one before we leave. Tell Marco 
tabloid Latino heat. <laughs> that was the best move I've ever heard you say, son. <laughs> he prepped for it. Yeah, you prep. You you held your brother for that, Bro, uh, brother. I was so I, I, I was so I, 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 I hate to cut you off, but um, someone just told me he's outside. Who's outside? They don't want to say him outside. Like how, oh, uh, right, that, that, that punk. Oh, oh go get him. Go I get him. Know so I, 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 I'll fill a buster. I gotta go. So, um, I was listening to Jericho's podcast and they were talking about Pat Patterson. And he gave such a he gave such a an eloquent and heartfelt uh, um, eulogy to him, and he spoke about how Pat Patterson was the great, probably one of the greatest minds and biggest influencers in wrestling history. The man knew how to sell himself as a face, as a uh, as a heater, as a as a heel. He knew how to sell everything up and down the line for the fans because this is what made sense. What bothered me was in this conversation, he spoke about how there there is a move to where, again, there is a progression when it comes to wrestling fans and the changing in wrestling. But there's also a thing to where you still have the basics that go down in wrestling, such as, you know, the common things. When, when I come to work, when I go to work, when I'm going into work, there's certain tools that I still carry with me. I have my keys, my ID, my gloves, my uh, my pager, uh huh, and I have to make sure I have other PPEs in case. Those are the essential things that you need as a as, as an employee at my job. For a wrestler, you need to know your gimmick, uh, uh, um, know the business, know the ring, be a part. Of the promotion, understand the etiquette, and fucking sell, sell. That's the big part of it. So there's a part. There's a part of the conversation where Jericho talks and he says that there was uh, something he learned from Pat Patterson to where um, there was a match during uh, during AEW where Nick Jackson did a swan tom to break up a pin, and Patterson would have said, "Why did you do that?" And the fact would have been, he's like, what do you mean? He goes, why would you do that when you could have just ran into the ring and broke up a pin? Why do something extra? And I was like, okay, that is true. Why would you have to do this major breakup of a pin? The only person you're putting over by doing that is yourself. Right. You're not putting over the match. You're putting over yourself. And that and that's and that's why that's what pisses me off most about the business when you when you could clearly tell that you're in that match just to put your, yourself over and you don't give a fuck. Like, Kevin Nash, I think he used to do that, right? He used to not give a fuck about any other right. people's shit. But he also respected the business as well in a, certain, in a certain level because he also was like, yo, something has to make sense. Yeah. But then the other thing goes where the hypocrisy came from where Jericho was that he was talking about how he understands the, the level of wrestling now to where it's acceptable to have fucking five tope suicidas in a match. And it's like, no, that shit doesn't make sense. There's no reason to see a tope suicida in every fucking match. That doesn't well, it doesn't I, make sense. I actually have a story about that because in this week's in this week's in this week's wrestling runs shit. Wrestling rundown. R- runs down. That means you took a major shit while watching yes, wrestling. Yes. The true J- JR JR even JR went online to say that you're ruining you're ruining the DDT and the super kick by kicking out of them. Like, by doing it, it, it all the time. It's dead. But, and, and for me, it, it, doesn't make, it, it doesn't make any sense when the super kick used to be the dunzo. You get super kicked, you're fucking out. Now, hey! Now, I'm getting kicked, now you're kicking out at you one. You through that? No but, you know, the, no, but the crazy thing is that... <laughs> all right, here, here, now here, you're kicking out of one. No, here, but here's why. Because okay, everybody says the progression of wrestling has to leave. Something has to be, something has to be put to the side. Everything is not gonna fucking continue to be the be all end all. But now that becomes dangerous ground because now you're about to do some real stupid shit to be a be all end all. Why do you think Kenny still protects the one winged angel? Because that's the be all end all. The be all end all, right? Right. Which, by the way, so- why does Randy still protect the RKO? Because it's the be all end all, right? And if and 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 there was but, but see, but see, but that's but that's 
but that's why I said a few weeks ago, or maybe a month ago, to change the name of the, the the move from the finishing move to the signature move. Right. Because I can't call it a finishing move no more if it's not finishing the match every time. Super kicks are just done, though. So. Super kicks is done. The only way you can say is that the only person that, sh- and if they're gonna say it this way, if you're gonna phrase it this way, the only person that g- that does the super bo and or super kicks is Shawn Michaels because he has such veracity and such fire that came behind that kick that nobody could kick up from that. Sell it that way. Yeah. The only reason why the DDT can be kicked out of or that people are able to do is because Jake the Snake was the only one who could do it with such veracity in which that no one could kick out of it. Right. You're not selling it that way. No. No. At the end of the day, what did he do? He put, like, fucking mayonnaise on it and made it different? It's the same <laughs> shit. It's the, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but if you give me that... He put he Dijon. Talking, he, he put Dijon mustard on it. <laughs> no, no, no. But that's a terrible excuse. Jake did it different. No, he didn't. What, did he tuck his head in more? What did he fuck? I don't understand like what he did that was little different. Bit, we're talking sell about, me that. A like, little bit. We're talking about the art of the no sell, where nothing is being sold. Not a gimmick. Not a move. Nothing. Nothing is being sold. Nobody. I. I, I don't. I. I think everybody has now gotten to the <laughs> understanding that this is a video game world. Remember, in video games, you could you could start off with a finisher and you do it, and people kick out at one. I think this is a real. This is we a real just, video game. We, we, we were just talking about how Leo, the mic is on. You can get on. The mic is on. Sorry. We were just talking about how Leo Rush did the fucking Canadian destroy from the top at GCW or onto a table against Joey Janela and he kicked out oh, at CCW, one. GCW, yeah. And, and it's he, like, and he no sold. <laughs> like immediately after, I think it was literally not. He a one jumped out of it. it yo, I swear to God, I would have yeah. never. Shout out my boy Leo Rush, yo. Yeah, but I would have never. I, I swear to God, I would have <laughs> never booked him again. <laughs> why? I would have, why? That, that, Wait, that's unprofessional. Both of them or, huh? Leo. It was both of their ideas, so who would you? Both of them. Even, both of them. I would have really? ne- I would, I would never booked them that, again. That, that, Guess that, what? That, they were booked again. Huh? That, of course uh, they were. Uh, but, uh, but to me, to me that, just, uh, that disrespects yeah. the business to me. But it's also a thing that to the me. promoters are just as stupid as the fucking yeah. wrestlers. Because no, he's the right, day, ladies and gentlemen. There's a board. We are stupid. There's a board. You're stupid. There's a boss that has to tell you that. There's an agent. There's a booker that has to tell you. What the fuck are you doing? agent is what a lot of people are missing out is why cool. no but even agents are allowing this it. it has to make sense you know yeah like, even though agents like, are allowing my perspective, this i don't care if it's cake, like fucking killing kayfabe or some shit but like i i go through every match like with, with everyone i try to keep it different from, uh, behind the scenes at vxs yeah but you can't you tell know? me that you're and gonna you're uh, sorry go, go ahead go ahead no no i'm just saying like you you want to keep it different and especially make sense and if something like that happens if somebody so gets, so will be in your head like, all right let me ask so you we're gonna brian yeah, cage yeah. brian cage versus jtg and we're gonna have brian cage do a triple match Mega power bomb and make him hit the roof. And JTG, you're gonna kick out at one. one. <laughs> I hate like, like no, what the finish. You can't top that. But that's the thing. You can't top. How that. can you? How can you say a, a person gets hit with a chair shot four times <laughs> and kicks out at, at two? <laughs> that's basically video death. Video games. Video games. I it, think is the biggest influence to what. Every this generation is Grand Theft Auto Five the, the ruiner of this shit. Yeah, absolutely. You play the fucking glitches on. You, you and me. Raw. Yeah, bro. Oh, oh, um, Oski, uh, Oski, um, Oski mentioned something to me this week, and he says, "Like, yo, uh, you know, I, I thank you, and I always acknowledge that you use words that I use to this day." Because you know you help my vocabulary, yeah. and one word I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up is crescendo. I love crescendo. that word. Crescendo. You bringing something to the next right. level yeah. so that it makes the, uh, the More outcome important. better. Yeah. It makes it so you need a crescendo to get to that level. If you start a match with fucking four chair shots, that motherfucker should never be in a match. Yeah, it's a flow. Yeah. It, it should it be done. Be exactly. Yeah, the crescendo yeah. is the flow. You're, you're building up to There's something. a beginning, middle, I and find end. It as a movie. Exactly. Beginning, that's middle, like, end. That's like I'm sorry to spoil it for anybody, but like that's like Thanos snapping his fingers in the first ten minutes of the movie <laughs> and ending it all. <laughs> How like, can you chop that for the next two hours? And I'm you just bored. Fall the next three hours. And, yeah, of the like, and I would even fuck? allow. It, and I would even allow it because at the end I go, okay, these guys are superheroes, so that you know. But this is real. This is a sport. Unless you're telling me, you know. Well, you know, John Wall hits the game winner in the first quarter. That makes no sense. <laughs> if Brian Cage hits fucking Blake, uh, was it Blake Christian? Blake Cl- Christian. <laughs> uh, sorry, Blake Christian. Uh, how much does Blake Christian weigh? Like a buck twenty weight less. And Brian Cage is what? <laughs> fucking three hundred ten pounds. Yeah. And he hits him with a chair. I think he should be in a fucking hospital. <laughs> Let's be honest here. To be honest, imagine Either that or in a fucking coffin. Yeah. Well, let's be for real. Brian Cage, yo, imagine, Come on. imagine Brian, I, I, Brian and Brian. Fuck this. Imagine Brian Cage jackhammering Blake he, Christian. And he has fun, and he has fun like that too. So no, but I, it's I, still I, you want to you also, you want to sell the idea that there's something going on. Yeah. Look, 
I put you through three fucking tables in real life. <laughs> the police are going to get called, son. You think oh, but this is wrestling. Okay, fine. It's wrestling. But it's yeah. also to where, yo, sell that you're fucking hurt. Yeah. Like, I mean, Thank I, you, I, Pat I, McAfee. Fuck, Thank you. You think they're telling the boys at AEW that? Like no, no, I don't think they're telling, they're they're telling their roster. No, no, you're saying? no. no nobody does that. Wow. Pat McCaffrey took it in by, upon himself, and he said, mm -hmm. "You know what? I'm, I'm going to wear, wear this." And somebody, somebody argued over there on the page, and he it was like, it. "Well, you got to remember, uh, he's not a wrestler, so he could uh, he could sell that he's not hurt. Oh, I mean, he could sell that he's hurt. So it goes, okay. That means he's smart." Just because so why can't a wrestler not sell the same shit? Just because I'm the Incredible Hulk doesn't mean that I don't have boo-boos every once in a while. Exactly. Even uh, the fucking Hulk uh, has get fucked. Uh, door hit with hammer. It hurt. Uh, he he sells the and he, shit. And, and, and you know, guess what happened? He bandages himself. He puts a neck brace on because you're fucking hurt. Right. You know, sell the ribs. Sell the fucking Nothing arm. bothers me more. Nothing, I'm sorry. And, 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 I, and I love... I love... I love good transitions in wrestling but you know what bothers me the most when Omega and like Matt Jackson would have a match and like super kick kick up kip up super kick kip up Canadian yeah. Destroyer flip up I'm like what are you doing son it's a ballet ladies and gentlemen <laughs> you know remember remember yo <laughs> Fantasia <laughs> Ricochet hit Braun Strowman with a fucking with his finisher and Braun Strowman did a kip up I mean Whoa. a kip up uh, when like a year ago, but I, but but you know, but, no. but how are you telling me? That's crazy. Yo, know, it's funny because I um, I was listening to Cornette right, and he tells a story about how um the Dudleys went down to OVW. This was when you know he was running it, yeah. And they had a storyline that was going on, and, and the Dudleys went down just for one shot. They went for that for that night. So that night, um, oh, I forgot her name. She uh, what was the 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 chick's name that had the fucking mole on her face that was with JBL. Oh, Jillian, Jillian Hall. Mo Jillian yeah. Hall. She was in o OVW then, oh. and they were pro they were. She was a an, uh, she was a valet, but she was also a wrestler then, right? And she was in an angle then. So they had a match. So they, without consulting the agent or the booker, they did a thing on the on TV to where they put Jillian Hall through a table. Right. So they go to the back and they all hype because the spot was crazy and the and the crowd popped for it and everything. Jillian Hall went to the table and Cornette went to her and says, "Yeah, that was great and everything, but you just fucked up my show for the next three weeks." <laughs> so they go, "What are you talking about? How the fuck is it gonna be that I'm gonna keep her in an angle now, knowing that she just went through a table because two men put her through a table, which, and which, which should be automatic death? <laughs> exactly. And now I'm gonna make it look like she could come back next week. She's gonna be on TV for a month now. You just fucked up my story." That's a good and mindset. And that's a problem. Yeah, 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 right. And it's another. here's another thing. And we were talking about Pat Patterson. Mm -hmm. And we talking about the art of the cell. Yeah. Uh, Pat Patterson used to work a territory in San Francisco. This is where uh, 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 he really got his big start at. Yeah. And he used to have these big, you know, he would be like the main event and stuff. And the crowd would always pop. The yeah. promoter at the time would say, yeah, that match is great and everything, but now you just fucked up my fucking promotion. You fucked up my territory. <laughs> and he go, what are you talking about? You're leaving tomorrow. How the fuck am I gonna top that now with the talent that I got here? Right. It's all. It's all. It's all. A you're system. gonna. You're here for the moment. You got the fucking the greatest match that ever happened. Now I'm now fucked. I gotta wait. Now I'm fucked until either you come back or I find a talent that can do it again. And it's gonna take me months to find that. Now my main event sucks because you reached my pit. You reached my roof. You you fucking bro you broke the glass ceiling for me. So <laughs> JD's stupid. Ooh. Nobody sells better than LeBron James. Facts though. Um, he should be a wrestler. Every <laughs> NBA player. <laughs> <laughs> Not even just LeBron, every NBA player. The, 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 you, you know what? And for that, I'll just segue quick to that. You could blame European basketball for that because they That's started true. that selling shit. That's true. European they, basketball they started that shit. It became a fucking Broadway show. Yeah. So I'm so hyped for NBA to come back. No, but what? honestly, it, 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 it's gone to a point. And, and like, we've even talked about the selling of the gimmicks. You can't even fucking sell your gimmick anymore. Nope. You can't. You know who I'll give credit for? Lana. Because during that whole Rusev thing, she didn't post a picture with Rusev once that entire shit. And that was a Facts month, that was a long fucking story. You too. You know what I blame for Lana though? You got went through a table every fucking week. And you, yeah, that's the problem. This big bitch threw you fucking threw you on a fucking <laughs> table every week, and they brought. But you know, I can't even blame. And that's another thing too. I can't blame the wrestlers because at the end of the day, they're being told what to do. Exactly. The only thing the only thing you can't say is like, no, I'm not doing it. That's stupid. Right. And which 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 me, which, which, which in, the, in WWE you saying that is basically a death sentence right now. But at the end of the day, it's like if you're gonna do it, fire. If you're gonna fire me, fire me. Whatever. I don't want to fucking work here anyway. It's bullshit. This is right. nonsense. Right. Uh, 
I mean, come on. That, that, that's, that, you can't sell your gimmick. You guys don't know how to fucking separate your fucking social media anymore. You don't know how to fucking put together the fact that, listen, um, I got... It, it, Triple H could be a blame for that, too, because I forgot what, what it was. Triple H got put through... I think it was put through a table. Oh, you know, he got hit, he got chair shot, and he was at NXT the fucking next day. I said, come on, come on, guy. <laughs> You're a fucking student of this shit. See, when Paul Bearer got dredged in cement, you never saw we him. We never saw him. You never saw him. Undertaker should have been in jail, but <laughs> you want to push it that far. Or at least sell it to say, you know, the next show is like, thankfully, somebody came in. And you know they broke the glass, and he was you know he was saved. Yep. Like, but he's in intensive care right now. Blah, blah, blah. Sell it. You know who's selling it right now? Matt Jackson. Selling what? His knee. Yeah. For, like for the pet for the past month. I fuck with that. But somebody smartened him up to that shit. For the past yeah. month, I'm realizing every single match he's in by midway, his they knee smart, his knee gets re fucked up, he, and, and, and he actually yeah. But you better not be super kicking. On, no, but you better not yeah. be super kicking with that knee though. No, he's not. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He relies down. on. He actually, I actually looked at the match this past week, and he actually relied on Nick for a lot of the a lot of the most of the offense. Because I remember in the in the beginning of the match, he was like fine, and then he re injured his knee. That that's I'm okay with that. <laughs> JD says, "How do you guys get thrown through a table and thrown off ladders and still put on a 35 minute match?" Facts. That should be the end that of be the, the end match. <laughs> that's right. like that's like the triple the triple threat TLC match and Bubba Ray Dudley goes through the table in the beginning of the match. It's like when whoa. Fu- when fucking you're um, done. when Kalisto hit that shit on the Uso when he did the the uh, the the Serena Del Rey fucking move onto the ladder, <laughs> yeah. yo, dude. <laughs> Uso should have never seen. He never should have been seen for a month, son. That should have been finito, son. Right, right. Finito. I know motherfuckers that was paralyzed for just jumping off their fucking couch. Yikes! Then he went true. through a fucking yeah, ladder and you shit. You gotta see the shit they got on. I'm not plugging them, I swear. But IWTV has this uh, yard shit. Uh, P O R. We gotta see they be that jumping shit. off. Yo, I'm talking about like the first five seconds. They be jumping off the mama's roof. Oh, we gotta see that. One, two, kick out. Yo, and what? I love, and oh, I, we gotta see fun. that it's shit. It's supposed and to be I love, satire. I swear to you, yo, I love. I want watching... to see you react to that one day. That but, shit is wild. But here's and and, and, and <laughs> this is P O R. And this is what I was gonna um I was gonna um talk about in um in wrestling rundown, but I I, I think I, I'll share it a little bit now. Yeah. The problem is is now that. Since Matt brought up earlier about the super kicks are dead, the DDTs are mm-hmm. dead, all this shit is done. Now you have to do extra shit to make it seem like shit is legitimate, and a yeah. lot of motherfuckers are getting hurt from this yes, shit. They are. I look really at, feel like look the games have an influence on that. I, I swear to God, like, the I, Indies have. I think I think especially with like my type of generation growing up with uh, those video games, just create a characters and have that have that fantasy, right? And, and regardless, now people what, are actually doing that. Like it takes eight, like it takes eight, eight, eight chair shots in SmackDown versus Raw seven to start bleeding. But it, regardless, seven, yeah, you regardless, was seven. Yeah. regardless what you say about e, what people say about oh you can blame ECW for that, but nah, ECW ECW once again here's the word again had a crescendo to get you there. Yep. Yo, when fucking when when Mick Foley and, and Terry Funk had that match, and at the end when everybody was throwing the chairs in, you didn't see Terry. Come on. <laughs> fucking break out like the fucking thing. They died. He, he was dead underneath that <laughs> shit. <laughs> Bro. It's like, what the fuck, yo? There was at least a build up to it, you know? Right. And I yeah. think that the, the artist, the cell, is. Listen, we just saw Sting. We were talking about Sting, right? Sting came Sting. out. Like a clown. Like a clown. It's Sting! He comes out, right? The, the, the night of, uh, 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 of, of winter is coming, right? And everybody's like, ooh, yeah, Sting is here, right? Hey, whatever. Ooh. Whatever. <laughs> winter is coming on your face. <laughs> what? <laughs> What? Hey yo! The, the yo. following the following week he comes. What? And following the following weeks now he's fucking homie to Kong. La, 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 la. Hey Cody, how you doing? Hey, I'm not here for you. La, oh. la, la, la. He should have had fucking a bu- uh, a hand buzzer and a fucking uh, 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 make balloon animals and shit like that. It's like yo. what the fuck are we doing with Sting? Yo, he, came, yo, he came out and said, "This is awesome." I'm yeah, like, no. What the fuck is this? <laughs> This is what we pay. <laughs> the shit that the chattering teeth, like the Joker. <laughs> I'm crying. <laughs> With the fucking a flower that shoots fucking water. water. What the fuck are we doing? <laughs> Come on, guys. Maybe we'd be more invested if you fucking believed in your own selves. Maybe if you believed in yourself and your own gimmick, it fucking would work. I don't, I don't understand this shit. I really don't. And I love the like, fact. Uh, uh, it's, it's just. I, I, I Miro, know. Miro, your gimmick is what? 
A big badass, right? I'm a mad. I'm a bad. His fits are fire. Don't even come at him. I'm a badass his gamer. His fits are fire. I'm a badass. He, he said his fits are fire. Yeah, just, his fits on. of rage. No, his outfit. Yo, his oh, his, oh, his bro, outfits. Oh. 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 Yeah, and because that, that's exactly what when you see with a wrestler that doesn't have that fucking gimmick as a uh, uh, a rich dude that he has a fucking legit fit. Yeah. If you want to come out like a gamer, wear fucking wear, wear sweatpants Fortnite, and fucking Fortnite and, and shirt. A Fortnite shirt and chancletas. I mean, let's be for real. <laughs> <laughs> Holding a bag of fucking Cheetos. Let's be for real. Like, come on. Or ice cream. This is a, you, you, no a G Fuel, a, a Monster Energy. Ah, gimmicks is dead. Nobody fuck really G cares Fuel, about bro. games anymore. You, Nobody gives a fuck. Nobody cares <laughs> about gimmicks anymore. I this bought old. G Fuel today, boy. You got a problem, boy? It's fucking what flavor? Dumb. Fruit punch. I want to try it. Just no. I bought the powder because I need I need more energy during the day, so I want to try it you out. Put that in water and mix it up. Yeah. in Glendale. Oh, and 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 that's the big and, and that's the and JD, oh, that's yeah. the biggest sell because he's talking about AEW had it going on, and now they just said, fuck it, we're gonna do what WCW did. That's the biggest sell because at the end of the day, all you guys. Are Sitting there talking about, uh, you know, AEW is the best. Everybody, they're not even selling themselves as the best. No, they're not. They're selling themselves as a carbon copy of a fucking promotion that died twenty years ago. Ooh. Wow, that's a hot. Let's take. be honest, though. That's a hot take. Let's be for real. This is what it is. You're selling yourself as a product that fucking existed twenty years ago, and you talk about, nah, we're new, we're refreshed. This is this is where it's supposed to be. Fuck the whole sports angle shit. You're selling yourself of something that occurred that. This is why WWE put the fucking cigarette out on your head because it was dead. It's over. But now you got a strength. And he, you know what? It's like um, uh, Isaac said, blame the fucking indies because that's where the fucking the 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 views come from. The internet, indie bullshit. The Did internet, you see the line wire, Yo, all that? Homeboy at that ECW, uh, no, no, the ECWP, uh, was it ECWP show? Was it ECP, it? ECPW. Yeah, I know exactly. ECP, that, ECPW. Yeah. That's what it is. At the ECPW. Motherfucker did a a a, 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 swan, a fucking suicide dive outside the ring, went through a chair, broke the chair with his yeah, fucking head. Yeah, I saw that. Mike Law. Mike should have been. Mike should have been done so. He should have been carried. Yo, yo, yo. The the <laughs> ma the match the the match should have been dead. Yo, yo. Is that his gimmick or something? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? No, he should have been carted off, and that should have been over. How the fuck did he continue that shit? Because they, they, they I don't know why. Because maybe WWE thinks they're fucking the Avengers, man. Maybe they think that he they're in that. Maybe they think they're in that same realm, huh? That was a and they're crazy not. Video, and they're dude. fucking not. <laughs> yo, he broke the chair with Yikes. his fucking head. That shit went viral. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, the dive. Of right? course, it, but you see, that's the dumb yeah. shit. Because now his stupid <laughs> ass is wearing a fucking badge of honor. Like, look at me, I'm viral. I broke a chair with my fucking head, and it was. I would have been mad at the, the dude not catching me. You know what the worst part is? He's playing. He's gonna try to re -re replicate that shit every time he wrestles now. Oh my as a part god! Of a gimmick. And, I, and, and I, I don't wish bad on anybody, but that motherfucker's gonna be a quadriplegic if he does that shit. <laughs> and that's the real sell. <laughs> when you're fucking in intensive care, fucking uh, <laughs> I, uh, with fucking IV tubes coming out your fucking ass. Jesus, but uh, whatever. It, it, it just like I said, it's over. Like, it, the it sell really, is over. It, the it's sell sad. is fucking over. And then you get mad when you're people not go, invested. Uh, and, and and everybody and Matter of fact We had a conversation With Homicide this week About it and, and, and it's like These young guys Who are coming up They don't fucking They don't respect The, the business nope. All they respect Is getting fucking Views and likes And money And fucking And going viral On dumb shit they you, care more about their TikTok accounts than their fucking in, in ring work. Everybody goes to Canadian. Oh, you saw you saw you saw they broke kayfabe. Manny Rose and Sonya Deville did TikToks together. Oh my god. Bro. And that's the other thing. It's like come on. And they were just in a. a Intense rivalry oh, And now they did the fucking Like the choose sides TikTok My speech is my recital And they fucking like Dancing together and shit I'm like what This is what I'm saying it, Now if you would've done it As in okay. Like you guys were beefing And the show My shit was better than yours No they were best They were hugging They were hu Get the fuck out The fuck they're hugging on video for I don't that's know. You I guys, want, that's what I want. But though. here it goes. You guys are old. You guys, are, uh, it's not you guys, because it's me. You, you're old. You went the old way. So I don't but yeah, do you, TikTok. But you'll blow dick as soon as you hear, fucking. <laughs> what a Goldberg is here! Yay! He's ninety. Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> Fuck out of here Nothing's worse than Fucking PCO Fuck all you Who like PCO But at least he was Consistently still wrestling It is like he left Yo, And come back PCO alone man Stop My Stop boy PCO alone Come on son a, some respect I prefer, on two, name, I prefer two Cold Scorpio Fuck One more match no One more match <laughs> Get the fuck out of here With this shit man
All right, guys, we're gonna be cutting. <laughs> we're wow. done. We're cutting a promo. This which, week by the way, up. which by the way, quick, 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 quick fact. And I'm shout happy. To, I'm happy shout to, to see Jason. Shout out to Jason. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm watching the chat. What's oh, up, that, y'all? Yeah. yeah. Um, real quick, um, we just spoke about how the super kick doesn't finish matches anymore. Yeah. Scratch that. Dolph Ziggler won tonight with what the super, super kick. kick? <laughs> <laughs> and give it to. All right. Here's here's a, all right. Let's, before we wrap it up, and you guys, we, we, as a matter of fact, we're gonna put it as a post on 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 the Tuberkers Tabloid page. Who still sells for you? Ziggler. Ziggler definitely still sells. He is the sell. Um, Mysterio. M- yeah. Well, because yeah. Ray's an oldie. He knows what the yeah, fuck it is. Yeah. He knows what it's about. Ray still sells. I think Drew McIntyre sells. Um, he always has the emotion like, ah, Dan- fuck Daniel, Daniel. Daniel Bryan. Daniel, da- Daniel Bryan still sells. Mm. Yep. We're talking TV or we're talking all right now? like gen- In general. In general. Who, who, who legit sells? Leon Ruff. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 I'll be honest, I, 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 but I'll say it. Matt Jackson is selling the knee right now, and I'll give right him credit. Now. I'll give him but credit. But for years, he was what is um, um, Road Warrior Buck. <laughs> it no. was like he was that fucking guy. It, it, so, somebody got in his ear and told him like, "Yo, you, you got to work this. It's right. got to be a work." Uh, I'm okay. With it. I'm happy that they did. Maybe uh, maybe they should fucking whisper in everyone's ear in that fucking company. Oh, and and, and oh, last week because this is another thing. Sell your championship, bro. Sell your belt. Yeah, you're yeah. not selling your belt. No. The, any every like we mentioned before, every fucking match is a stipulation. Why can't we have a fucking championship match with no stipulation? A heavyweight bout just between no, two dudes being the fuck just out going of each out other. Out with each other, it's always a fucking stick. Because they're not rely. You know what that tells me that they're maybe not um, comfortable. They're not, they're not, no, no, I, I don't think I don't think Vince and these and these bookers are um, confident that they could have a regular a, Sammy. A good match. Sammy still sells. Yes, he does. Everything. 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 Kevin. Even Pat's death, he fucking sold. Uh, he sells everything. Kevin sells everything but his fucking social media. He pisses me off. Kevin Owens. Yes. He sells everything but his social media. He fucking kills me with that. What do you think about Pac? Pac is another one. Pac, Pac sells. sells. Pac sells. Eddie Kingston sells. Uh that guy. Yeah. Eddie still sells. It's, um... Lost art, bro. It's, it is. It's, it's definitely a lost art. Um, it, it's, 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 like I said, I, then you... Then you get mad when I go to a wrestling show and I fuck with you, but it's like you don't even take your fucking job serious. <laughs> <laughs> you mad because I'm busting your balls, Danny Tomato? You mad because I'm busting your balls? <laughs> but you just got hit over the head with a fucking bat and you just kicked out at two and then you win the match. <laughs> fuck you! And then you stand up and you go, I want to thank everybody for coming out to the show. Like, you should be sounding like an invalid after you got hit with a bat. Like, man, man, hit the bad noodles. Man, 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 <laughs> Fuck Talk you. to you guys later And guys for watching on Facebook You're awesome Laters Much love This is JD from New York And you guys are listening To Turnbuckle Tabloid Before I air this segment For the listeners I just wanted to give a disclaimer About what's going to happen Ahead of time We had a conversation with Teddy Hart Not too long ago and during that conversation, he was discussing his road back into wrestling and how he was trying to get his life together. And we pretty much here at Turbo Tabloid, we encouraged him to, you know, take take what time was needed and basically put all his discrepancies and all all the issues that he had in his life to put it behind him and focus on getting his wrestling on. And many have said that with that conversation that we pretty much fluffed him and we didn't uh, basically challenge him on all his outside activities, his relationships and stuff like that. And for me and my partner, we sat there and said, you know what, when Teddy's on, Teddy can go 100 miles per hour and we'll just let him go because that's just Teddy. You, you're you not going to be able to wrangle him. Well, on this up, upcoming conversation, we were doing a follow-up after his release from prison and the focal point on this was we were 
concerned about his rehabilitation and what is he going to do after his small prison stint? What was going to be his next move? We didn't care about wrestling and whether or not he was going to sign with a promotion or who would work with him. We generally wanted to know how Teddy was going to fix Teddy and what was going to happen with him and hoping that he realizes that he needs help and needs some kind of therapy to get himself through this. During this conversation, it took a turn to where it went from where we were having a conversation and trying to get a better understanding of what Teddy Hart's thought process would be to for what we took it as it became an intervention just want to let anybody who's listening to this this is not a conversation shared to basically um, we're not trying to, to use his existing mindset and his history or his mental stability as an exposure for our show we are using this as a example of where you would think that someone who has such a solid upbringing or legacy that comes behind him and you would think that with that there is an individual who has it all together where in fact it's it's the opposite sometimes even people who come from a wealthy rich or celebrity lifestyle and background it's not always peaches and cream so in this segment our discussion with Teddy Hart is not as though that we are trying to exploit him and his condition we basically sat here and wanted to help him get a better understanding of his mindset and what's better for him his family and for those who are close to him wrestling doesn't mean shit if you can't get your shit together me working in the field of psychiatry and such I recognize when somebody has Somebody has these issues and needs help, but it's up to that individual to come to grips with the fact that they need help in a professional way. And that's what we here at Turbuckle Tablet were trying to do for Teddy. We only hope that with the conversation that you are going to listen to, you can recognize whether or not you're in the same place or you know others around you who are in this place and you could possibly help them to get the help as well so on this episode of Turbuckle Tabloid we have to say that we hope that Teddy Hart finds a, a a way of life in which helps him to better himself and those around him and he gets the help that's needed because we like him he we 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 love when he's on the show, and but we also love the fact that we are hoping that he could get the help that he needs. So, um, take a listen, and you guys could break down your take on what it is, what we did here with him. That's what I'm saying. I, I just wanted to make sure that I, I get permission for certain things. I want to make sure we're clear. With it. No, but, you don't have permission to use that. If you want okay. to cut it into sound bites, listen carefully, please. You don't have permission to use that. If you want to cut it into sound bites, and you can use what you think is going to be publicly correct, otherwise you're setting me up to get fucked. No, 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 no. Teddy, Teddy, that's why I told you that I was recording 
and I wanted to get and your that's permission. That's why Sunday. I talk freely. Right, that's right. why I talk so freely to you because I right. know you're a classy guy. And you're right. gonna tell me, "Hey, Ted, you're on record. I right, have no right, problem. Right. I don't mind telling you what and, I tell you because it's the truth." And the reason, and the, no, 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 wait, 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 Teddy, it, Teddy, before you continue, the reason why I do that is because you give such content. I don't want to miss anything, so I just want to know exactly what it is that I'm, I'm allowed so happy not you to record it because right. it's a hell of a promo. Oh, but, it, it definitely was. I wish I could use it, but I can't. But in order to cut that promo, I gotta have AJ Styles agree to a match at WrestleMania week and then I can kind of shoot promo on him and then people that are going to want to watch Conor McGregor call a guy a piece of shit and a pussy even though they're working it by that pay-per-view because Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor are best friends yet they're calling each other a bunch of names because wrestlers are two pussy-ass bitches to fucking have conflict so Tupac called out all those motherfuckers guess what every guy's name Chino XL Biggie Smalls fucking this guy this guy this guy guess how much money they made because Tupac dropped their name in a song, Nas, he dropped this guy's name, this guy's a pussy, this guy's this. Every one of those motherfuckers from Hit Him Up, you listen to Hit Him Up, he dropped all those names of all those rappers, all those guys made money. JD's a pussy, this guy's this, this guy's this. Guess what? Tupac made every one of those guys a fucking multimillionaire. In wrestling, they're too scared to have a fucking shoot promo cut on them and then make money when they get in the ring. Guess what? I get in the ring with you, I got to work with you. We're giving each other, we're, we're working together. Who cares what I say on the fucking mic? I'm trying to sell a fucking mark on a program, on a picture, on a fucking pay-per-view. So he buys it because he thinks it might be real. Wrestling's been exposed as fake when the word should be fixed. Yeah, and, and they should understand and, that I'm and, 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 I think, and I and I think that's why I think you know if, if if you don't want to use it for the interview, it's fine for the conversation, okay? But that's why I think that what you just said uh, prior to me letting you know that this was recorded, that I don't think there was anything harmful for it. I think it was actually you shooting a great promo and letting the the masses who was listening and even the industry know that. You are out here letting people know that you're back and ready to come back into the game. But I do have to ask you this: if this, if we could go from here on out, that this can be used. Can we use this from here on out? What's going to happen from this point on in the conversation? I'm going to be very publicly correct on the next promo because you're going to tell me ahead of time, hey, action, like a like a director of a movie. And when you ask say action, then I'm going to speak in English, not Chinese, because this isn't an English movie. I mean, it's not a Chinese movie. It's an English movie, if you get my fucking example. Okay, action. This is what's happening. Teddy, did Teddy hurt Teddy, or did the industry hurt Teddy? I'll say it's 50-50. Misunderstanding, uh, timing... Being at a place at the wrong oh, wait, 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 time. Before you continue, you know, this is action. You know that I, I, I want, to, I want to use this, right? Yes, sir. You're okay. going on record now. Even though I told you that I'm doing an interview with Netflix right now, and you're going to get me when I get to Hooters, I'm going to give you five more minutes right now. Quickly, sure, and then awesome. After that, we can start the interview. Sure, but you yes, did Teddy hurt Teddy, or did the industry hurt Teddy? I'm going to say that it was a combination of things. Bret Hart happened to be at the wrong place, wrong time. Imagine I got in when Bret was working the Calgary Stampede show and uh, they had a fucking whatever that was in your house and it was in Calgary and I was the guy that was in that match and they brought me in as a run-in there would have been a huge star like Randy Orton they gave him a little uh, they gave him a little rope in case because he was younger he didn't you know know everything about how the business worked I had nobody to guide me when I went in Brett punched out Vince no matter what anybody wants to say I'm not making an excuse but you tell me if Bret Hart and Vince McMahon didn't have that conflict, then next year I'm on TV. Owen Hart's not the Blue Blazer. Owen Hart's wrestling Stone Cold Steve Austin for a grudge match because Owen Hart and Shawn Michaels and Steve Austin have a huge fucking feud. And Brett's working with Shawn, working with Triple H, working with Kevin Nash, Davy Boy Smith working with different people. Instead of the fucking heat where Davy Boy goes to WCW, Jim goes to WCW, Triple H has fucking got a hatred towards Brett. Brett punches out Vince McMahon. So yeah, people got to give me the benefit of the doubt. Okay, but, Owen but, Hart Ted, didn't die, but 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 Ted, but Ted, maybe I would have been on TV. Ted, I'm, but I'm asking you, Ted. All right, I I I I, I can understand that. There is the 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 build up to how Teddy Hart was built and how the industry screwed the family in which way or one way. I, I get that. But you also own the accountability of your own actions. Was it due to the business or was it due because of your own personal lifestyle? You tell me what was legal 20 years ago. Marijuana was not legal. I grow marijuana, and I had a bunch of friends flying marijuana on fucking airplanes internationally that got charged by the U.S. government under the Patriot Act. 
You think Vince McMahon's going to put me on TV knowing I sell fucking thousands of pounds of weed all over the world? I highly doubt it. But Guess this... who worked for me? Eric Bischoff. Guess what show he worked for? Matt Rat. Guess who drives a Lamborghini and an NSX when Eric Bischoff comes up to work for me and gets a check for me and my pilot? Three years later, I do Wrestling Society X. All my pilots are busted by Homeland Security. So guess what happens to me? Guys go, holy fuck, this guy's real. Guess what real is? Not good. Guess what hurts? The truth. So ask me how many moves I've done and ask me how many moves I've invented. And I'm going to ask you this question. Please answer like I answer you. Right. What do you do for a living? Listen carefully. What do you do for a living? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, a essential worker. I work for the city. I'm, I work for the hospitals. Do you have a boss? Yes. Do you have a brother or a sister? I have siblings, yes. Do you have a brother? Yes. If your brother went and punched out your boss, what happens to you? I'm screwed, pretty much. So you tell me what happened to me in wrestling, and don't, don't avoid the question and blame me for my own actions. Brett punched out the billion-dollar fucking king of wrestling, who I loved, who Stu Hart sold his territory to, who Tyson Kidd worked for, who Harry Smith worked for, who Chris Benoit was wanting to work for in the future, who came from the dungeon. Every motherfucker that Brett ever had under his blanket of protection, Brian Pillman, Davey Boy Smith, Davey Boy Smith Jr., Natalia, Tyson Kidd, myself, Steve Blackman, Ken Shamrock, all those guys were Brett's guys. Brett punches out Vince. What do you think happens to me, bro? I, no, Teddy, I, that, Teddy I, I know that occurs. And this is what I, I want to have this conversation to where so it, it's, I'm asking it's, it's, you again because you asked me a question. Right, right. What happens to you if you punch out? What happens to you if your brother punches out your boss? But you, Teddy, know, you didn't do it. But Teddy, I'm 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 telling you, I, I I understand what you're saying, the repercussions for it. But the other thing is that you've had family and members that worked with the business, worked with the promotion, still under and that. And they were jobbed out, and they were jobbed out for ten years. You still and have a, you have a you have respect. a family member who's still in the business right now. You have Natalia who's still with WWE right now. Yeah, and Natalia worked harder than any person on the roster. She never missed a show, and she's a perfect employee. But if you ask me, Natalia didn't get the same shine as Charlotte Flair, even though she had way more matches than she did. Correct? I I, I can see. I, I get that. But I'm I, I'm asking because about you, you. I'm asking about you because, like no, I said, you're not asking about me because I've never once sent a videotape into WWE, and I never asked for a job. I worked for the WWE no, no. Uh, I, twelve years ago. 12 years ago or nine years ago or whenever it was when I was there with Natalia Tyson Kidd. It took us nine years to get rehired after I did Wrestling Society X. And Wrestling Society X was a success, but it wasn't a huge success. So WWE called me after I did Wrestling Society X, which was um, it meant my name was good enough. Never one time did they ever talk about Teddy Hart going on TV. There was never, and I said this before, there was never a chance in hell that Triple H or Shawn Michaels or a bunch of those guys were going to let Bret Hart's nephew on TV until Bret Hart shook Michael's hand in the middle of the ring. But was and then it, after that, but was you can watch but, but, Tyson Kidd and Harry Smith get the days well, You're not listening. You're not letting me finish. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm listening. I'm, listening. I'm, I'm trying and to just interject let something. Let me finish. Yeah. We're on fucking blast now, and this is real. Yeah, yeah, real I got you. Is real. Tyson Kidd is the baddest motherfuckers on the planet. Harry Smith's one of the baddest motherfuckers on the planet. I would pay money out of my own fucking pocket to see Brock Lesnar strap up and fight Harry Smith one-on-one -on -one in a fucking shoot fight. Fuck Dana White and the UFC and all that shit. I love him, and I love the UFC. But if you want to do a show, Mike Tyson just did his own boxing show outside the IBF or the WBC or the fucking IBC or whatever these different sanctions or federations are, and he made a lot of money because people want to see a fight. I guarantee Harry Smith's one of the best motherfuckers on the planet. He never got a chance to do UFC because he was busy trying to be a professional wrestler. Instead of making 300000 a fight or 100000 a fight, He's making fucking 500 bucks a match with MLW, who I like MLW, I respect them, but they're fucking cheap because they don't make a lot of money and it costs them a lot of money to have a show on TV. So instead of getting paid big money, we wrestle on fucking independence to get our name out there. Hopefully, WWE picks us up someday. Okay, I don't want to get a job in WWE. I can't pass no, the no, test. No, I, I, I tell you, but, but that, that, that's, what I was gonna, but that's, that's what I was going to ask you. I mean, I, I see it now that that's not the goal right now. But the goal that I'm asking you right now is that since what's been happening with you, uh, your hiccups that's been occurring, the, the, you know, the, the problems that you've been having, and I get it, you know, we all hold ourselves accountable to personal things. But my thing is that, once again, is the question is, is Teddy hurting Teddy and his brand? 
you know what the mark of a man is? If you're wrong, you say you're wrong. If you're sorry, you say you're sorry. So, yeah, I would say 50% of the things I did, if I could go back in time, I would probably change this a little or not do this, and that would allow me to be more ingratiating to the WWE or to Impact or places that maybe wanted to work with me. But I can't go back in time and change anything. All I can do is ask fans to understand that I'm sober now. I'm not even smoking weed. I was never on hard drugs, but I smoked a lot of weed, and my mind might have been diluted. And anything like too much chocolate, even though it's okay to eat, too much is no good for anybody. And it's one of those things I smoked a lot of weed, probably too much. And instead of being focused on making people uh, love me, I wanted people to just have con conflict and controversy. And if you like me, you like me. If you didn't, you didn't. But I want everyone to love me now, and I want people to understand I'm trying to turn a new leaf. I've been in jail. I've made some mistakes. I'm owning up to them. I'm trying to get clean. I'm going to counseling. I'm trying to make sure everybody sees me in the right light this time. But you know what? It takes time to convince people that you changed or do you want to change. So 50% of the problems are me. And the rest of the problems, I think, are things that just circumstantial things that happen. It was bad timing, or maybe God had a plan for me not to be at a certain place at a certain time, and maybe this is my time and place, and uh, with the right people behind me, like you guys, that ask the right questions and actually listen, then I can explain to you, you know, that, sure, I fucking fucked up definitely a lot, and I've said too much at certain times, but you learn with experience. But what was your, what, now, what was your biggest like, well, demon, though, Teddy? What was the biggest demon that, that, that hindered you from... Not only your personal life, but also your professional life. What was the biggest demons that 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 held you, held everything back? Demon? Yeah. What was the biggest demons that you had to deal with? Because it had to be either your stubbornness, your personality, your professionalism, uh, how you dealt with other people in the back. What was your biggest demons? Because uh, then, then again, I've always been polite in the back. Apart from one show where CM Punk wanted to fucking go outside and I asked him quietly to go outside and I fucking dealt with him as a man deals with another man. And I haven't been out blasting the, the uh, we'll see the outcome of that fight because CM Punk was nice to me after everything was said and done. So I don't need to talk about the old situation with him, but everyone knows if you want to fuck with me, walk outside. And that's something that a lot of guys will say. Teddy Hart's got a lot of balls. So I don't think there's something you can say that would be like, this is why Teddy Hart got taken out of a company. I didn't ask for a job, and I wasn't asking for a job, so that's why I didn't get work in those companies, because I wasn't available to work, which you don't understand. But you were able to work with certain companies. You worked with a lot of companies that, that were taken to Teddy, and then all of a sudden, uh, one way or the, along the line, something occurred, and you were no longer able to be with them, whether it be creative differences, whether it be your personal life, whether it be whatever it was. But what is it that's hindering people to 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 you or anybody else to embrace the fact that there's something that's going on that's not being that's not being understood with Teddy Hart? I, I keep I, the question I keep hearing you ask me is what kind of failure caused me not to have some kind of work? And it's like I don't think that's the right question. So I'm going to try to answer your question with, with what I would say was there's. There's no, you're asking why Teddy Hart wasn't on TV for a certain amount of time. And it's like, that's because there was no spot for me. I was on BN Sport. I did MLW. I made all my dates. I asked for my release. MLW said, sure. Then they wrote on the computer because they're embarrassed. Uh, oh, we gave Teddy Hart the release. He was hard to work with. It's like, well, then why the fuck you put two belts on me? You know, it's bullshit. Why would Ring of Honor use me? And then if you want to watch the tape, who had the biggest pop of the night? I did. Why am I not booked again? Because I said something rude about Gabe Sabalski in a shoot interview, which turned out not to be true. And Gabe Sabalski, at the end of the day, turned out to be one of the smartest motherfuckers in wrestling history. And that's a regret I have, is because Gabe Sabalski is the best booker I've ever seen. He made the most guys famous by understanding talent and understanding the development of talent. And he knew who someone was before they knew who they were themselves. And he's responsible for all the guys that made it to WWE that are really, really talented guys. So I owe Gabe Sabalski an apology. I don't apologize to no motherfucker unless I mean it. I'm not some guy that blows smoke. So there's a guy that probably was one of the guys that would have said, Teddy Hart's fucking this, this, or this, because I asked for it, because I said something that was fucking incorrect about that man. And that's something I have to go back and say I'm sorry. And I don't really want to say sorry unless I mean it. So for the guys that I say sorry to, that's a guy that did a lot for other people's careers. And if I had let Gabe Sabalski manage my career like he had planned to do, like he asked me to do, and I didn't listen to him, I'd probably be in a lot better spot in wrestling right now. But I maybe, 
in my mind right now, retroactive thinking is great, but I can't change the fucking past. And if I could go back in time with Michael J. Fox and fucking be in that movie Back to the Future, then awesome, but I can't. So I can only go, what can I do in the future? Tyson Kidd's an agent for WWE. He's got a great reputation. He's trusted by everybody. Maybe in a year or two with correct behavior, counseling, uh, we'll say consistent, 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 good match after good match after good match. If there's an independent platform I can work for besides you guys and violence and suffering. Otherwise, I'll just work my own territory. I own Canada. I basically have my own territory there. I can do whatever I want. Once probation's clear and I can go back to Canada and COVID's gone, I have my own territory, my own promotion. I have places in, we'll say, I'm not going to say too much about where I'm going to be now because I read it. I heard a song, uh, a Biggie Small song about the, uh, well, I'm not even, I don't like to say the word, but it's like there's something about the, the Ten Commandments. And it's the, the Ten Commandments commandment song yeah. by Biggie Small. So mm-hmm. I don't like using that word because I fucking despise cocaine. And I hate using any word that has any uh, anything to do with that fucking garbage drug. And a bunch of morons that think that I get high. I smoke weed, nothing else. And I can't even smoke weed right now because I'm on probation. So, But I listen to a song of Don't Let People Know What You're Going to Do Next. Because I've been letting people know what I'm going to do next out of fucking kindness. And they've been blocking me from getting to where I need to be because then the real, real, real reason, most of the reason is guys do not want to work after Teddy Hart because I steal the show. I do the most moves and I hit it the most accurately out of everybody else in the fucking world. And I can ask you to watch my YouTube videos, pound for pound, move for move. I've invented the most moves on the planet and I've never heard a motherfucker in the ring. And you can watch all the guys from AEW that wrestled me in MLW or on Indies, and every one of them had a good match, and not one of them ever got a scratch on him. Teddy. I, I have Cody I, Rhodes. I, Cody Ted- Rhodes is a guy. Cody Rhodes is one of the guys left on my list. I want Cody Rhodes, whatever his price is, you let me know. My guys have more money than fucking God. They'll pay you the money to have the match. I want Cody Rhodes one-on-one sometime. Hopefully Young Bucks will say, uh, we worked with Teddy for fucking 15 years. He's the man, and he always makes everybody look good, and we've never had a problem with him. And if Cody Rhodes needs to kick my ass one, two, three in the ring, guess what? We're happy, happy to have that match happen. I don't care about the ending. I care about the match itself. Teddy, you've been on the show a couple of times, right? And about a year ago, we were talking about your comeback and, you know, your time at MLW and all the stuff and what occurred. You had your, your you know, your indiscrepancies that occurred in the media with the law enforcement and all this such, right? My whole thing is, is that I worry about you because I think that I'm not sure whether or not you understand that, yes, you're a big talent, and yes, many individuals in the business have drawn from you, have done things from you, have probably stolen or duplicated things from you. But, once again, is this a thing that is there resentment for it? This is why you're not being the talent that you should be excelling for? Or is it that, you know, like I mentioned again, the demons are catching up more than anything. Listen, I'm going to be honest with you. I was a big pothead myself. I used to smoke pot a lot. I was a big weed head. But there's a time where you cut it off the bullshit and you say, you know what? I'm not going to do this anymore because I'm not having this as a crutch. Was this a crutch and was this a handicap for you? Was the marijuana a handicap that hindered your, your career? Was marijuana, I'll say marijuana was a handicap. This is the question I'm going to ask you and I'll answer your question after this. The Young Bucks, I remember finding them fucking 18, 13, 16 years ago, whenever the fuck it was. Because, I mean, I'm a, mar- I'm a pothead, so my memory might be off on dates for certain things, but... I remember finding the Young Bucks, and they were the best tag team I've ever seen in my life. And I've been, I mean, you were talking about me and Jack Evans, me and Tyson Kidd, me and Harry Smith. Neville, I had Neville's first match in England with him that ever meant anything. Neville and Ricochet and the Young Bucks were like, and Samurai Del Sol, El Generico, and Kevin Owens were guys that when I saw them, they were so fucking talented and so good that I, I immediately knew superstar, superstar, superstar. I would tell them, don't ever do what I do. Don't fucking do what I do, because what I do is a recipe not to get hired. So these guys need to be told what to do anyway, because they were so fucking smart. But like an overprotective father, I would give them advice, and they would look at me and smile, and they would continue doing what they do, which is living their life with extreme fucking caution and very, very smart decision-making. I'm reckless, and I don't give a fuck, and I wasn't trying to get a job. If I asked the Young Bucks for a job, they'd say, do you, are you healthy? And I'd say, no. They'd say, are you happy? And I'm going to say, no. They say, are you in good shape right now? I'm going to say no. They say, then why the fuck would you ask us for the one favor we can bestow you 
Why would you ask for it right now? Because some podcast guy thinks that you should be on TV now. Wait till I get in shape and wait till I'm ready. And I bet if I ask someone for a favor, all the people you think that might not want to hire me might be standing in line to hire Teddy Hart that plays ball. But Teddy Hart is fucking fucked up, and I'm fucked up right now. I'm pissed off. I'm out of jail. I'm on an ankle monitor, and I'm still facing time. So I'm not a guy that anybody wants to hire right now because I'm not asking my friends who love me dearly who want to walk in the back, hug me, and kiss me, and take care of me. But one thing's being friends. Another thing's mixing business with friendship. You don't ask for a fucking job if you're overweight and you want to do a modeling commercial for a guy with a six-pack. You go to the fucking gym, you get lean, you do the cardio, you do the necessary work. So when I'm ready, I go, Tyson Kidd, I've been clean for two years. And he says, what do you mean clean? I said, I'm clean. I can pass a piss test. He says, well, that means you only smoke marijuana, so if you're clean, it sounds bad when you say you're clean because people think you're doing all these fucking drugs. Don't get confused because it's weed. But weed stays in your system longer than any other drug in the world. So I don't smoke weed anymore. So that's the first step of taking my brain out of the fog. The second step is hitting the gym every day, doing cardio, and then going back to gymnastics so I can start to do more shit like Will Ospreay and Ricochet and the guys that I innovated. The shit before anybody did it was me and Jack and Ricochet. We're the first three guys to really do the shit. And AJ Styles and Amazing Red. If you really want to go back and watch the watch the watch. Watch all the stuff and who started the stuff. you got to give those guys props and quiet storm for inventing the Canadian Destroyer. But I'm a guy that gives everybody recognition for being innovative. And when I'm re- I have a good enough memory to go back and remember all the different people that made up these moves. Or Rick Ruckus was another guy that was an innovator that doesn't get enough credit. But then 20 years later, you see all these moves being done. And some of the moves I can't do as good as I used to do. So it would be a fucking insult for the fans that think Teddy Hart's the best high flyer in the world to come back. And I cut out half the moves on my move set because I'm fucking uh, a little bit lazy. My, my fucking cardio's not that good. And I'm depressed with life after a divorce or after a bunch of bad news or after a bunch of deaths. And people don't realize the shit that goes on in my normal life. You know, I've had four or five friends that are very close to me die of cancer in the last four years. And it's just been... It's been a lot of shit that's no excuses, but it's, it's hurt me from being the fucking Superman I want to be. And for the fans that love me, like you guys that want to see me win, you're asking, what's the secret? What can we do to help you figure out the recipe for a fucking dinner that everybody's going to want to buy? And I'm telling you, I know the recipe. When I get it fixed perfectly, I'll send it to you guys, and then we'll see if I can live by those commandments that I set out, because it's going to be a bunch of people like you that are going to set out a bunch of lists of requirements, you're going to say things that are going to be successful in Teddy Hart's career taking off. And that's the next two years of my life. I'm going to be held 100% responsible for the next two years of my career and see if I can win over people that didn't like me and make people understand that we're confused or in the fucking, we'll stay in the middle about Teddy Hart. And Teddy. by the end of my day, I hope that these people go, you know what? The guy's changed. He's working on making himself better. Nobody's perfect. I've been through a lot of fucking shit. I've been to more funerals than anybody in the fucking world of wrestling. I've lost a lot of really good people, but I think they're in heaven watching me, and they're motivating me, and they're telling me, listen, shut the fuck up now, listen to the people around you, take advice from your managers, be quiet, hear what they have to say, and then try to actually put it into your your, uh, daily living, and and and, and see how the evidence works, you know, and And then if what you're saying is right, guess what, six months later, I'm successful, I'm going to come running back to you and say, hey man, that fucking thing you told me about this and this. My manager, Gus, said this and this. Those things made me successful. I'm feeling better. My business is better. My relationships are better. I, I, I'm smart enough now to realize Teddy. as smart as I am, I'm not the smartest guy in the fucking world without a good people, a good surrounding crew around me. Does that make sense? Teddy, it makes sense, but, Teddy, I'm also looking at this. We're in our 40s. You're a father. <laughs> what is it that we're looking at from here on out? Because... Those are the two important things that I'm looking out because, like I said, I'm in your age, Debo. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a dad myself, and I know what it is to have, you know, tough upbringing and, and, and a tough life, but also finding a way to put it together. What's the first thing that you put as priority in your life? Yourself, being a dad, your career. What is it? What, what are we putting together right now? After all the shit that we went through in 2020, like, what is it that we have to put together? Can you still hear us? I'm, I'm, Can you still hear us? Yeah, hello? hello? Yes. I'm switching over from your from speaker phone because I can't hear you very well to my car phone. So I hate to do this. You can repeat the question. 
Yeah, no. I'm going to have my manager stepping in now, too. I'm going to put on speakerphone because my manager's got a few comments and stuff that he's been working on, kind of like a business plan for me. Or like yeah, a, as, long as, as, long as, as long as you guys are clear because... Us, so. Yeah, yeah. No, as long as you're clear because right now the, the audio is not really good coming on through your end. If you guys could uh, at least speak a little louder or at least be uh, um, audible... We'll, totally we'll understand that the okay. uh, on our end is bad. I'm okay. sure on the podcast. The, the, what I'm asking great. is, Teddy, we're 40 years old. We're a dad. We have our career, and you know we are. We also have what we're dealing with in our personal lives. We also have what we're putting together to fix what was wrong in our life. What is the biggest priorities to deal with right now? Because as a father, as a man of my age, as a career man. The first thing I think about is my, my my child and those around me to 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 help me fix what could fix the wrongs that I've done. What is Teddy's big priority right now? Is it his career, his fatherhood, his personal demons? What is it that Teddy's looking out for first? Uh, the guys that took care of me when I got out of jail is the first things I'm worrying about. Because when you're out of jail, you don't have anybody on your team. You're by yourself. Nothing's worse than being lonely. So I, I've created a team of people around me that are motivational speakers, that are hard workers, that have good morals, and try to surround myself with winners instead of people that are question marks. And hopefully these are the people that will then bring me, if I do fall or I slip, they'll be the ones to catch me and bring me up again. And to make sure that I get on the right track and I stay on the right track. One thing's getting there and then the next thing's staying there hard to get there and it's even harder to stay there being consistent is a big thing when you get hired for a job you can show up for a week and be really good but if you don't show up the second week guess what you get fired so i i i'm i want to i want to tell you ted i i i i i root for you and i root for you because i know a lot of individuals inside or outside of my personal life who's been there who's been around what you've gone through and the work that I do outside of this microphone where I do, where I get my real money at in my career, I've seen, I seen successes as well as defeats just like in a ring that you may know about. But I also looked at, I look at you to where you're not, you're not really getting the understanding of how important you are to those around you. And I really think that for, in my opinion, and I may be wrong because I don't know you that well, but I've, I've, we've spoken that I believe that you're a man who comes from a strong family base and a strong upbringing that you should put together the pieces and think about not only what can you do in the ring, but what's better for outside the ring. And I think that, um, in time, you will realize the stuff that you lost, you will gain more in these days that we're getting now. I want to say to you, Teddy, that I look for the best and I wish for the best for you. I hope that we can uh, talk again. I would like to have you on the show again to see what your progression is from here on out. I know you were a busy guy. You're doing your stuff for Netflix, and I want to appreciate the time that you gave us for this moment. And like I said, I hit action before, so you know I'm going to use the, the audio. But I also want to tell you that um, I'm not one of these fly-by-night, and this podcast is not one of these fly-by-night motherfuckers who's using it to exploit you. We want to tell people your story and share your story and what your progression is now. And I hope that you could come back and do this again with us soon. And I hope... That once again That you could take responsibility For your actions And use that As a motivation For Your life Not in the ring so, But outside the ring My uh, what? Hey um, Do you mind if I uh, throw some words in here uh, Who are you Because there's a lot of stuff that's uh, Who are you um, Teddy Teddy uh, this is my manager. Uh, I'm what? Gus Demonowski. They call me Gus. Um, I'm oh. actually his manager currently. Okay, cause and, so, been... so if you talk, can I use your audio for the show as well? Absolutely. Please. Right, no problem. Please. I would love that. Like, once again, so, uh, uh, wait, no, no, just say your name and say, yes, Turnbuckle Tablet could use this audio. No problem. Hello, my name is Gus Demonowski. I am Teddy Hart's manager. 
and I haven't left his side 24-7. <laughs> no, no, so are, 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 you, are you his sponsor? Yeah. Okay. That's he's my sponsor. He's the, one that, he's the one that kept me so making my appointments with my probation officer, my ankle monitor, all the different conditions I I'm have being on. Literally board. his assistant uh, manager, his entertainment manager, finance manager, okay. his relationship manager. I'm basically his general manager on everything that involves Teddy. I'm helping him maintain his quality, maintain his consistency, and also maintain his, uh, you know, his health. Okay. I drive him around. And I started out as a driver. Okay. And next thing I knew, he had no manager. He had no entourage. Mm. I'm like, bro, you need an entourage. He goes, all right, take me to this place. I have a really nice place. I'm going to buy you some uh, Versace's. I'm going to buy you this. I'm going to buy you that. Okay, I'm wait, like, wait, 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 yeah, wait. Right. All right, before you do all that. <laughs> the one thing I the, the the one thing I'm I'm saying is like like once again I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not going to attack anything that you're doing for him right now my whole I my whole aspect like I said when we spoke to Teddy years uh, you know a year ago we, it came in because I I actually know Teddy from the indie scene I've met him numerous times and he 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 may or may not remember me and such but I got connected with him through um, promoters and other individuals right and i was very concerned as an individual not as a podcaster not this mark fucking kind of host who just wants a story i was concerned i was concerned for teddy and, and he'll tell you that i actually went back and forth with another fucking youtuber podcast dude about his story and how they attacked him and i wanted him to share his side of that story you know that's why he oh, brings up the mind. night wave guy this does why he can then that was his biggest thing that happened in 2019 2020 and you know and i was there i was there to you know at least give so, his part um, of the story but wait wait before i continue um yeah. i just want to say that if you're there from him for him genuine being genuine i appreciate that and i and i thank you for doing that for him but Already when you told me about this get you Versace or whatever the fucking shit is no. I'm not I, I'm not I don't care about that. What I'm caring about is his well being and what is his Oh no, no. I that's that, no, I'm not gonna go I'm not gonna diving into what we what, you know No no, no I'm I don't just even, saying I don't I don't even want to know about what it is that he's doing for his health care. What I wanna make sure is that he's okay and that his focus is on his well being to getting better in his lifestyle. That's all I really care about. Anything outside of that, when it comes to his I, professional stuff, that's all we care about here in Turbo Tabla. I don't give a fuck about none of that other shit. The, no, no. The thing, the thing is, it's very important because Teddy, look, Teddy has a story right now. Mm -hmm. Teddy has Netflix calling him the next Tiger King. And the, the we're working on the end of the documentary right now. And it's phenomenal because we have goals. Well, not just Teddy. His entire entourage. So let me just uh, let me just backtrack real quick. So he took me to this place. He got me Versace. He got himself Versace. I'm like, cool. We, we go we go out. We go out to a club. I'm sorry. What, 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 I'm sorry. What's your name? Again? What's your name again? Gus. It's Gus. Gus. Okay. Okay. Gus. Okay. I'm sorry. And, and, and you're really upsetting me, honestly, because. After what Why? he's been going through. Well, you got to understand. No, no, no. Maybe I misheard you. Listen, listen. Maybe I misheard you because the quality is very poor. No, no, no. The, the quality is not poor because I have upscale fucking equipment here. I'm upset because of the fact that I don't give a fuck about none of this Versace nonsense or anything. What I care about is well being. And for him to hey, be considered. No, listen, listen, listen. listen. Carefully, I'll get out. You can, you, can, you can have your retort after I say this. What I'm telling you is this I'm not caring about Teddy being the next Tiger King. What I'm caring about is well being. I'm not caring about where he's going to make his next buck. I'm caring about his well being. And that's all I care about. And what is this all about? Is this what Teddy wants or is this what your management team wants for him? Can I answer this now? This is me again. This All right, Teddy. Teddy. Yes, so please, what Teddy. Guy, what he was trying to, when I, let me ask you a question. Yes, we have a lot of time. We can cut this interview if we want after. But sure, sure, When sure. I met you, you're saying I don't remember you, but I do remember you. Was I nice to you when I met you? Yes, and Teddy, and I, and, 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 I, and I think that I'm being pleasant and nice too, but this is what I'm saying, that I'm also... No, no, we're, we're missing the point. You're missing the point here because we each have a point, and this is just a miscommunication okay. because you're one of my biggest fans. And this is Gus not trying to drop a line of Versace's me nothing. What Gus is trying to say was Gus met a stranger 
who was generous to him. The reason you like me or have any empathy for me or understanding was you met me on the street at a show after a show. I wasn't trying to hustle you on a shirt or a picture. I was actually you did, but I'm not mad at that. You actually did, but I'm not mad at that. Uh, bro, now you're now we're now we're going on. Let me let me get it. No 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 no. But actually you did, but you actually did, but I'm not mad at that. I'm not materialistic. I'm not materialistic. I'm just trying to tell you. I believed in this guy way before that. I ended my Uber trip halfway through as he was talking to me without even Googling but, 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 right, but why are you but why are angry? I'm not being angry with you guys. Like I said, the only thing but that you're, I'm yeah, you're, you're, you're I'm not being angry. The only thing the only thing I'm saying is the only thing that I'm telling you guys is like honestly, listen. My whole thing is like I said, I'm thinking about his well being I don't care about materialistic. I care about Teddy Hart. But why would you bring it up? Guys, why would you bring up the whole thing? If you would, just, story there's not a story. Not story. story My story would have never been about that. I'm I could, I could have started. Going on in the future, we have things. Look, guys, I could have started my story where out. Teddy hustled me for a me, shirt for an interview. Chance, I didn't do that. Let me give you a chance and let me get a word out because Teddy is an amazing person, and I'm trying to explain that. Okay, if it's through, it doesn't matter if it's materialistic, his spirit, his heart, his vibe. His, his energy is uh, his people around him. But when we walk in a room, I swear to God, it's the most amazing thing in the world. So let me, let me backtrack. Okay. I met him in my fucking Uber ride. He asked me, hey, I'm going to smoke a cigar real quick. You mind waiting? I'm like, I'm going to start the trip now so it doesn't charge you for waiting. He goes, thank you, man. You're a really good guy. Thank you. I'm like, oh, don't worry. Just, just smoke your cigar. It's cool. He goes, all right. He smokes his cigar, and then he comes around my car, and I'm like, hey, please, sit in the front with me. Because I don't want the back smell like cigar. He goes, all right, you know, you, you care about other people, no problem. Like, yeah, G- no problem. Gus, I'm going to be honest with you. With I, I, Gus, Gus, to be honest with you, I really don't, and I don't think the listeners of the show really care about that. What we care about is his but well-being. Do they care about him what, being on Netflix? Do no. they care about him being on Netflix? I don't think they care about uh, any, I don't think they care about any of that. I think about? they care about Teddy fixing Teddy, and I think that's what they care about. I don't about think Teddy they care about Oscar, that. I don't think they care about that. I don't think they so care, care about, about that. I don't think they so care, care about that. that. When Teddy wants Wait, to promote, listen, 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 listen to me. Listen, listen to me. Like I said, I'm not going to go. Tell you about Teddy's life. You're telling me you care about Teddy's life. I'm trying to tell you what's been going on in the past week and a half, maybe even two weeks now, maybe longer. I lost track of when time. Teddy, so when Teddy wants to promote Netflix, me, Teddy will go on his rounds to promote Netflix. I'm talking about. I'm not. I'm not. I'm trying to tell you. When Teddy, when Teddy wants to. When Teddy wants to do the rounds, Teddy will do the rounds. It's not about that. We're all about Teddy getting not better. And they fucking hung up. Hey, bro, I didn't hang up on. Oh, shit, thank you. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I thought you. I thought you did because it went dead. We listen. You, you listen. Say something. You gotta say something. It's finished. You got. I'm gonna give you 20 seconds. You give me fucking 30 seconds. We'll go back and forth. Because oh, it, uh, Teddy, this is, you. This, is, this, is this is you. Teddy. This is Teddy. This is you. This is you, right? This is Teddy fucking hard. Okay. Teddy, fucking uh, Teddy, Teddy, the phone. I'm it's not dis- like you. He likes Teddy, you. I'm not disrespecting. Like you Teddy, I'm not disrespecting bro, you. Are. I'm you. Right no, now, I'm you not. You disrespected my guy, bro. And Teddy, I'm, I'm not. You. Teddy. I on a podcast. Disappointed my, you just disappointed me, bro. Teddy, you're disappointing me. You know why? Because from the guy that I've known early on that we spoke and we, we had our early we, we had our early conversations on the show, Teddy was in charge of Teddy. And that's all it was. Now, if Teddy has, if Teddy has a problem that he needs assistance with, where he needs outside parties to help him to get a uh, uh, um, uh, 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 clear guy, you, listen, to, you gave, you wanted me to give you twenty, yeah, you wanted, you wanted twenty seconds, and I'm giving you twenty seconds. And if Teddy need assistance to people to correct his life, which is outside of the business. I appreciate that. I understand that. And all I'm hearing right now is Netflix, Netflix. You're the king of fuck. You're the next king, uh, uh, Tiger King, whatever the fuck it is, and getting you back in the business. And what I want to hear is Teddy is getting worked on with Teddy and clearing out his personal fucking demons. And that's all I care about. Now, Teddy, if you want to shoot, go 30, go your 30, and which you probably go another 30 minutes. But I, I appreciate it. But let me know. Let, let, talk to me, Teddy. Are you, I'm asking you correct. I'm out of politeness. Are you done now? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I asked for twenty. You asked me for twenty, and I gave you twenty, and I said, "Go ahead. If you're gonna go, go okay. ahead." So, 
Okay, my give me thirty to start the clock because we're in court now. Because no. you fucking you said a few, a few things that pissed <laughs> me off. It's not about that, to Ted. We have a, we have a conversation, Ted, and this is what it is. It's and not we're about allowed to be we're right. Just, you know what? And we're I'm being to, cordial. You, I'm, not be, the front. I'm not being. I'm not being. I'm not attacking. You. I still love you. But you're talking saying? over my thirty seconds now. So no, 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 no. I just want to. I just want to make it clear with you. I'm not attacking you. I'm not attacking. I'm not attacking the people around you. What I'm going at. You know, I like you. Yes. You know why I like you? Why? You know why I like you? Why? Because you're you're honest enough to call a fucking spade a spade and you ask a tough question. So that's why I like you. But two things you said are wrong. I don't remember hustling you on a fucking t-shirt or a fucking picture. I, if I asked you to buy one, guess what? Usually I'll give it to you if you didn't have the money. No, no, I've no, never Ted, been no. a guy, and then it really hurt my integrity, bro. Because okay, I don't okay, hustle okay, okay, Teddy, yeah. I, 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 I'll let you retort because since you brought that to me, I'll tell you exactly when and where it happened. And then it really doesn't matter, but I'll tell you exactly when and where it happened. Homicide's 25th anniversary in Brooklyn. I asked you for an interview, and we had talked before, and you told me, yeah, I'll do an interview with you, but you got to buy a T-shirt for me for 20 bucks, and I bought the shirt, and I gave it to somebody else. And I How didn't get the— and I, your interview? And I didn't get the—does that, does that, does that even matter, sir? What? I said, does that even matter? You just asked me a question. How many people listen to an interview? You know what? You know who listened to my interview? The 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 thousands that I get on my podcasting outlets from Spotify, Google Play, Google Outlets. You, all those all those podcasting outlets. The thousands that heard it there. The thousands that heard me defend you when Nightwave was giving you shit. And the thousands that heard me retort to his bullshit when I went at him when he was trying to attack me over Thank something you. that I was with you and co-signing with the shit you was talking about. But that that goes. That's and, neither, and, that, and, and that's neither here or there because at the end of the day, don't tell so once me. Once again, I'm asking you the same question. You didn't answer it. How okay. many people listen to your podcast? And I told you thousands. I have thousands. I have on Google Play, so SoundCloud. Congratulations for being congratulations for being consistent and successful because it's a lot of hard work to do a podcast. Lose your fucking vibe, my friend, because you're about to have me and you become fucking enemies because I'm your biggest fan and I love you, but you're not understanding. I'm asking you, if I hustled you, I asked you if you want to buy a shirt from a fucking broke-ass wrestler who's paying a bunch of legal bills, Teddy, please help me buy a shirt Teddy, and I'll do your podcast. Teddy, it you. wasn't even That's about that. I would have gotten a shirt regardless, Teddy. I just asked for well, it and you don't what? tell me that you, you didn't hustle me. You can ask me this me. question. Am I desperate? Am I needing money? I got forty thousand dollars worth of. I didn't think you needed the money. Ago. This was a few years ago. So <laughs> I, didn't I didn't think you need you. money. I didn't and think I'm trying you to need... sell T-shirts because guess what? Normally for twenty years I don't make money on shirts because guess what? I got family money. I'm not living in fucking the states on probation. I'm in Canada. I can live at my own house. I fly in to do one book in a year, Jersey, or one book in a month with Jersey All Pro. I never try to hustle shirts because it takes money out of a lot of other wrestlers' pockets or out of their mouths because that's all they have. So yes, if I tried to sell you on a shirt. For a podcast, I would call that a barter or a trade. Okay. I don't want you, my friend or my fan, just let me finish, the compliment to you. I don't want people to think that one of the people that loves me, like you do, or defends me, that I tried to con you or, or slick you into but buying Teddy, something. But, Teddy, I could, also say, I could also say on the – but, you see, you didn't let me even give to flip it because you, you sat there and you, you, you questioned me about something, and I did, but you didn't even go back. When I, and I could actually say that the, the other times that I saw you at ICW, at the AEW uh, um, event in Philly, where you didn't, and you showed us love, and you, you remembered us, and that's what was a big thing about us still being fans fans of you and not only as you, you as a wrestler that? that's the nicest thing you said and, and, nice but this is what I'm saying so that it wasn't it wasn't as you as a wrestler it was you as a person you were the only individual was I that, nice to you of course Teddy but I didn't I never said that you weren't I never said you weren't but I'm, I did, but Thank if you you're gonna brother. question me you're about, my defender dude you're my source and I've you're always been defending sword. you I've always have but the whole thing is that I'm trying to defend you now with this whole thing when you got this management team and I'm wondering what's the real goal for Teddy Hart is the goal to get you popularity and money on Netflix and all this shit to be the next Tiger King or is the is the goal to get Teddy Hart well to get him better to make him a better person not in the ring but outside the ring for him to be a dad for him to be a a, a, a productive member in society this is what I'm asking I'm not, I don't I don't to be honest I don't care about if you're going to be the next AEW star or 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 a or, or, or person that's going to be a trainer at WWE I'm asking is Teddy Hart going to be a better Teddy Hart and if these persons are there to help you or hinder you, that's what I'm asking. There's there's a certain kind of, I don't know how it goes down, whatever animosity or, or a certain type of vibe, but the, 
the idea or the image or the message for this thing has got a little skewered. So I'm going to try to bring it back to where you said something small, sure. which I think needed to be interpreted. Sometimes things get lost in translation. So you're one of my biggest fans, which I love. And I like you because you met me on the street and we were friends on the street because you took certain things out of a wrestler outside the ring that it doesn't matter who the fuck you are in the ring. You're not a superstar when you're on the street. You're judged on your merit. You're judged on your code, which is you look someone in the eye, you shake their hand, you remember their name, and you're polite to them. If they spend money or five minutes of their time to ask you a question outside the ring, like an autograph or to give me a hug or a handshake, I've always tried to be one of the most humble guys on the street. But in the ring, I'm a cocky motherfucker. Guys get confused. You're trying to figure out, and this is the only part I get upset with or, or not even upset but hurt. You're trying to put a fucking question mark or an answer on why I didn't make it when, bro, I never wanted to make it. I just I, didn't I, write Teddy, a script of that's what the, not I, to do. Teddy, I never asked that. What I, what I, what I, no, Teddy, I, I, the only question I asked about that was whether if you made it because someone you felt was holding you back or was it you? And you answered that. The question that I'm I asking now is back. about who is there for back. you now you know and why are they there? Can you ask me this question? Can you ask me this question? Sure. Why did I hold myself back? Ask me why I held myself back. The, I, the, but that's my. That's not my question to answer. That's your question to answer, and I'm asking and you I'm that. I'm asking you to ask me this question. Why did I hold myself back? Just ask me. It. Please play the game with me. Teddy, why did you hold yourself back? Because there's guys out there like you who believe in Teddy Hart, and if I gave you a 60% Teddy Hart, and you, you were the guy that I bet on to change the world, and I fucking failed you because I wasn't equipped to run the race, you'd look at me in five years and say, why the fuck did you tell me you were ready? We didn't need you to fucking say that you were going to run the race, but if you said you're ready, we believed in your words, and you weren't equipped to do what you said you were going to do to be consistent, and you failed. And by failing fucking myself, I failed you and every one of the fans that believed in Teddy Hart. And that's why I say to you, I have never been ready to go on TV except for MLW. It's an easy schedule. It's one show a month, maybe two. I wasn't in the shape I wanted to be in. I wore a tank top for half the fucking matches. Straight up facts. I'm a bodybuilder. I know how hard it is to get big for all the guys that are in shape, like Cena or The Rock or fucking, you know, we'll see even like Dolph Ziggler. These guys, they're training every fucking day. They're in the gym all the time. My schedule, if I could and I hadn't fucked up and I wasn't in jail or I wasn't here, and these are all things I did to myself, no excuses. But in order to run a race, you want me to run? I'm running against Brock Lesnar. I'm running against AJ Styles. I'm running against fucking... Uh, you know, no, Batista, Teddy, are you, Teddy, Trump. are you running against yourself, Teddy? Because honestly, there's there's the two Teddy Hearts we know. We know the talent that's in the ring and the, and 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 the guy that's outside the ring. Are we battling the same guy? We're, well, it's a double edged sword. I'm battling myself, but I also know myself. Bruce Lee had a rule, and it was know thyself. And if you know yourself, you know when you should go and when you shouldn't. And I've never been ready to go. This is my promise to you. And this is what Gus, my, my manager, was trying to say to you, was Gus doesn't know me. He's not a wrestling guy. He loves wrestling, but he didn't know me. He just picked me up as an Uber driver, and based on a couple hours of conversation, and we got lucky on a pair of Versace's for sale, he's not a fucking materialistic guy. He's just dropping a line of my kindness. Let me finish. He was dropping a, a, something that I took him out, and because I was nice to him, like I was nice to you, the only reason that we're friends is because I was nice to you outside the ring. He might have loved my moves, but you didn't really care because I was nice to you on the street, which was a surprise. So that tells me why you're so special. So you and him are actually best friends in the future because I know what you're saying to him, Teddy, and you don't Teddy, want a fucking manager that's going to be bragging Teddy, about a bunch of shit. That's not what he was bragging about. He was just trying to Teddy, give you a word-for-word, -word, play-by-play of the last three weeks because I just got out of jail two weeks ago. I've only been free for 17 days. And since I got out of jail, I had no friends, no family. Maria's gone doing the best she can possibly do with her career. And she's so fucking smart and talented and motivated. The last thing I need to do is drag that poor fucking Teddy. girl down because of my shit. Teddy. So she's doing good. I'm happy. I'm going to finish this real quick and then you can understand where I'm going to go with it because you don't know where I'm going to go with it. No, no, no. But, but, but Teddy, I do, I do want to, I do want to, I do want to tell you this, Teddy. And I'm, and I'm going to be, I'm going to be honest with you. I, 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 I wanted to have this conversation because like I said, I wanted to talk to you not only for the podcast because I could be a self-indulged whore about it because of course I want to promote the show and, and have you on there. But also I wanted to be honest with the fact that I wanted the progression of the Teddy Hart that we spoke to in the beginning of the year and what happened during the time and then you in and out of prison and such and then we come back and finally in tenfold it comes over to where that you know you're out 
and your 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 free at the you moment. Who knows? Oh, Teddy, Teddy, wait before be, be, before be, but but no, I I just want to just before 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 you say something, I just want to just be genuine with you. And the whole the whole premise of this was for me to share this story with my listeners and stuff of what's happening to you. But now it's gotten a little bit personal for me because now I really want to be a little bit more involved. And I and, and if you don't mind, I do want to check in with you from time to time, not on the microphone, not on, on not, not on the show. I want to text you if it's okay to find out if, if, if everything's all right with you. Because honestly, I think that, and I'm not judging Gus because I don't know him, although wherever his mindset is, whatever the case may be, but I just want to check in with you from time to time. If it's okay, I have your number. If you think it's all right for me to text you and to see if everything's okay with you, because you know why? Because I think that you're a bigger man than what you not letting yourself be. And I think you're bigger than what the profession was supposed to be laid out for you. But I want it to be something for you to come to grips with you as a man, as an individual, without the heart family connection, without the dynasty, without all this going on. I'm talking about you, Teddy Hart, Mr. Mr. Edward Ennis, who has a child. I want you to come forth and connect with that man who should bring his life together. And... Like I said, you 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 gave me the you gave me the car blanche and the 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 the, 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 the go forth to use this on the show because I want people to hear this because my listeners are also guys who've been there like you or who are, who are like you who are still struggling with their demons or things that's going on with them. So I just want to say that before you you say your last words to us and hopefully you don't get rid of us because we're we're friends and family here at Turnbuckle Tabloid and we're not using this to exploit you because if I did I would have cut you off about 30 minutes ago and that's not what it's about what I'm here to tell you is that Teddy as a man and as a father I think I, I and no I know I need you to evaluate what's going on in your life and sit down and realize what's the best thing to go from here out forward and use that as a focus before wrestling or everything else. And Teddy, before we go, I, I, I'll let the floor be yours. You care if I speak now? That's what I said. The floor is yours, sir. Oh, I didn't hear you. Man, yeah. I got a real bad reception on this end, so I, I probably, I probably just said all the years. shit that I said, and then you didn't hear shit. <laughs> but any no, case, I heard everything. Yeah. I heard everything you're saying, but the last part of what you said, that's why I asked you. If I don't hear something, I'll try to ask you. Yeah, interrupt no, no, yeah, no. The one but... thing about listening is if you want to talk as much as me, you better listen just as good. And yeah. I, I still think that something happened with this podcast where you got, you either wanted to hear your own voice a little bit more than you normally do because I understand that, but you're giving me advice on certain things that I appreciate because you care. But at the same time, I'm not a fucking seven-year-old kid, and I don't need to be told how to piss or how to wipe my ass. You can advise That's me on sad. what to do with the toilet paper if you don't want me to flush you down the toilet because yeah. you have a special type of plumbing system. And I understand that type of message. Okay. If you don't get my analogy, then no, I get I'll it. say I get it again it. in a different way. I get it, Ted. You are trying to guide me on ways that you, a fucking guy who wants to see me make it, how you think maybe I could make it or how we could work on a, a business plan or a fucking game plan on what it would take to get on TV. But at the same time, Stop. if you just see me on the street and you get a hug and a kiss from me, you're happy anyway. Because I know that you're, like, you, you care no, about the Teddy. simple things. And I understand yeah. the type of person you are. And that's no, why I, I let you talk as much as you want to say. If you didn't like me, you'd cut me off. If you cut me off, just like Nightwave, I know where Nightwave lives. No. I know where he eats lunch. If I ever wanted to get Nightwave back, I don't fuck around, bro. I'm on the street. I come from the street, and I'm, I'm not some bitch that's going to fucking no. go to jail for anything but getting caught with weed. I don't play games. If I didn't like you, I didn't think you were talking shit, we'll meet up. We'll find you, and I'll meet you, and I'll have a chat with you one-on-one and see if you want to run your mouth the way you want to run I live in Ridgewood, New York. I'll, 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 I'll send you the address so we can have what a nice dinner at the well, local listen. Spanish restaurant if you want to. But Teddy, I, I think you. you missed the I'm point. Talking, what I'm saying, I know, I'm but I think talking, you missed bro. the point. I think you I'm really missed talking, the point. Bro. I, I'm still talking. Okay, bro. okay. You had your time. I let you go on for a minute and thirty seconds. I'm still talking. Bro. Okay. Let me finish. Okay, please. You said you're going to cut me off if you weren't my fan. You cut me off a lot of times. I'm long-winded. I get it. Trust me. But there's a reason. If you listen to the whole story, it has an ending to it. It's a question. It's a long question because it's 25 years of my fucking career on the line. Right. When you ask me to do a podcast. 
I don't know what the questions are. It's on the fly. You have no idea what I've done for the last six months. I've been in jail for the last four months. I just got out. They dropped two of the, they dropped three of the charges. I only have one charge left on my record. I'm on probation violation. So they dropped distribution. There's no charge of me selling drugs because I never sold drugs in my fucking life. I sold weed, never drugs. Don't get confused. I have a prescription for steroids. So if I'm caught with steroids, guess what? When it goes to trial, guess who beats it? Answer the question. I do. So it's dropped. Maria, domestic violence, dropped. Dropped. So there's no charges against me, no convictions. Again, just like I said last time, check the record, motherfuckers. I've gone to court four times and fought for my life. Just like little Boosie makes a song about doing fucking, he's on death row. But when his lawyer, who's a good lawyer, goes to court and the judge says not guilty, there's a small fucking retraction. There's a big article about everything I did to fuck up. But when it actually comes down to court and a judge and jury, not guilty, not guilty, not guilty, not guilty again. So I've been charged for one fucking pill, which is a pill of, and I'll say it clearly, ephedrine rip fuel from Mexico, which has a fucking precursor, one chemical compound, the same as a guy taking cough syrup and then piss testing in the UFC, and he fails his piss test. The guy's not doing steroids, but it's a fucking painted supplement. So the FDA has rules called proprietary blend. One of the things I took had a proprietary blend, and it didn't meet up to the FDA requirements. Virginia charged me with that. And then they took all the other charges off. So I have okay. one charge for you know one pill under I, a gram. I, I'm glad to hear that. I really am. But at the end of the day, all I'm still hearing is, I'm still hearing what is Teddy going to, how Teddy's going to fix Teddy, and it's not being said. But you know what? You're asking me how I'm going to fix it. Before I can fix it, bro, I have to get freedom. You're not, this is a game you're asking a question without the out proper answer. You're asking me to give you an answer to a question. I'm not, I don't even know. I'm still uh, fucking and, going And, to and that's all you needed to say. And that's all you needed to say. I didn't need to go through a merry, the merry-go-round through a bush and over the mountain. And that's all you needed to say. But you know what, Teddy? I still, and us here at Turnbuckle Tabloid, still have faith that you're going to be able to fix everything. And we can see you. Fuck the ring Fuck being the next Whatever the fuck champion The champion that I want you to be Is the champion in life Teddy And I'm talking about you As a father well, As an individual in life And that's all we give a fuck about And that's all we care about But Teddy Once again Thank you for your time I don't want you to feel That there's any heat Cause like I said This is a pure shoe And I want you to show That there's nothing but love Between you, you and I And yes Like I said I have your number If you don't mind I would like to check in with you The time to time To see if you're doing okay and if not, you know, it is what it is. But um, hey, bro, are you gonna let me plug any of my shit now? Because I've been doing social media, sure, and I'd like to try to get my sure, social Teddy. media out there. It would sure, be nice. Sure, Teddy. Or I can come back and I can call you back with my manager, who's given me his fucking life. And Gus, I don't have any heat weeks. with you, Gus. It's just that I don't know you, and I don't know what the fucking intention is. But that's okay. If Teddy trusts you, that's all it is. But go ahead, Teddy. Just and, um, and you're, you're protective. Hey, bro, you're protective over me, and I love that. I love that. So I just, you know, give a shout out to where they can get you out and what you got going on, man. Get, let Teddy, let everybody know where they can get you out and what's going on. So because I'm not good at social media. Mm -hmm. I have a Facebook page. Everybody, I'm sure, can get on Facebook. I follow you. I follow. I follow you there too. You're you're good there. I got you. So when you send me a message on Messenger, I've been individually answering all of the messages on Messenger. I've had like 600 people that I've had to individually text to let them know thank you for sending me a message. I never meant to superstar you. I've been gone, and I didn't have a, a, it's a shitty, but I didn't have a phone that was a, was willing or downloaded or could download the app. What's up? and download Messenger at the same time because it was a burner phone. I've been fucking dealing with financial restrictions because my bank accounts are in Canada. I have to go to Canada to get this shit done. I've never been able to get back on my feet since the Virginia charge. I was doing really good. I was doing the vlogs with Maria. Everything was going good. After that, I took a fucking tailspin. My own stupidity for not knowing where I was at the fucking, you know, I should have been smarter. I wasn't. I got caught for something small, some weed and some fucking, but at the end of the day, I fucking did my jail time. I did fucking six months on an ankle monitor. The question you asked me is how am I going to change my life and be somebody that you can see in the future as a winner, not on the fucking ring version, but on the street. I'm almost there. I have a court date coming up in March. I'm trying to, I'm trying to stay busy in the gym. I'm working on Forex trading. So I'm starting to do stock trading on foreign exchange. I've had, a, I have a house that we're working on for Netflix, a deal, which is the part 
the Tiger, that's why he said about the Tiger King. These are just people that are talking about Netflix that are talking to my manager. He's excited. He doesn't know me. He's excited. He's giving me his time. There's a potential deal. There's never a guarantee until it's guaranteed, but there's a potential deal. Uh, we have a few people that are out there that are working with Netflix that like my story. They've been following it for five years. I've never been able to give them enough fucking feedback or enough of a positive ending. They don't want to leave it as a dark side of the ring story, which is me fucking dead or fucked up or in jail. They want to leave it as a happy ending. So they're hoping I fix it like you. They want to see me do well. They believe in my best interest. They believe in my intentions are good. They believe that, sure, uh, my own stupidity definitely and some fucking wrong decisions here and there have cost me dearly. But all I can do is say thank you and sorry or please forgive me and let me have a second chance or a fifth chance or a third chance or whatever you want to say. And that's what I'm working on. I'm mad enough to come on here and give you my time and try to say I appreciate your love and honesty and I appreciate the fact that you're saying what you say. But there's something that's still like this next podcast we do, if we do another one, it's more of a follow-up based on these are things I want to tell you that I'm working on so that I can give you the answers to the questions you gave me because those questions, I can't answer them properly because they're like a four-part question. And I'm hoping hoping the follow-up is you're in a better mindset and you're in a better place. But, Teddy, thanks again for your time. And once again, much love to you. And and here at Temporal Tabloid, we wish nothing but for the best for you, sir. And do not not play the first – I got, I, I, I got you. I got you. I got it. Every, everything very, else. Very, very disappointing. Yeah, yeah. He did that to me. Every, everything, everything else is good. I, I'm glad that we got that clear. But Teddy, once again. Are you done? Cut this interview off now so that we can talk for real for a second. And then I'm gonna, I just ask you to do me a favor if you could. Are you are done this interview? It's done. Yeah. Okay. I'll cut it.